Over the last two decades, the dominance of the Northern Illinois Huskies run game has been prominent. The names roll on through Chad Spann over the course of the last couple of seasons, but now it's quarterback Jordan Lynch who's etching his name in the running game books at Northern Illinois. Today, a trip to Kalamazoo, Michigan to see the Broncos of Western Michigan. It's coming at you right now. Be dialed very high. A lot of excitement inside Waldo Stadium on the campus of Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo as we get set for a huge one in the Mac West, Northern Illinois, Western Michigan. The significance there you see the two unbeatens in Mac play in the West Toledo and Northern Illinois, both at 4 0, trying to extend the day. And oh, yeah, on a collision course come November the 14th into Calb, Illinois. Great to see everybody. Welcome to Kalamazoo. Michael Regai, my partner Doug Graber. Speaking of significance, this Northern Illinois football program is off the charts with that. Doug, they've won 16 of the last 17. Uh, only Alabama and Oregon around the FBS have done that. They've won 12 in a row in the MAC. And quite frankly, it doesn't look like anybody's going to slow them down. And, you know, the only loss was one point loss to Iowa in the opening game, a game they easily could have won, had the lead late. Jordan Lynch, though, is the unquestioned ringmaster. Now, he's the trigger man. When you talk of, uh, about diverse quarterbacks in the game, he's second in the FBS in rushing. He's number one in total offense. Doug, quite frankly, his game is flat out off the charts. But, and, and he plays the quarterback position with a linebacker mentality. That's Watch this Raider. Watch, he'll run over you. He's got the speed and the moves to run around you. I mean, he has been dynamic this year, and he throws the football extremely well, high in his efficiency. Yeah, the efficiency just absolutely superb. And Western Michigan knows that they've got to mark Jordan Lynch today. And on the Broncos side, when you speak of quarterbacks, Alex Carter, one of the most decorated quarterbacks we've had in the MAC. He goes down with a, a tendon injury on his throwing hand during week four. So Tyler Van Tubergen has to step in. Now, there hasn't been that much of a drop off. But Carter's experience, of course, is missing. That's been the, the missing link. Of course, Carter has thrown for 8,200 yards. Come on. Uh, Tyler Van Tubergen, you know, the big, he, he's got talent. We really liked him on tape yesterday. The biggest problem is he has lack of experience. He's thrown nine interceptions. Got to keep an eye on Western Michigan's defense today. They can be stout. A lot of veterans and the rover Johnny Simon is ready. He leads his football team in hits. He's a Thorpe Award candidate. Johnny, you ready to go? I'm a streaker. I'm 300 pounds, painted blue, and apart from the cleats, I'm completely naked. <laughs> Go stay! Oops. And if you've got cut rate insurance, they might not pay for this. So get all state. Mm. You can save cash and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an all state agent. Are you in good hands? This is the world of today's PC. A dark age where imagination has been banished and shapeless gray designs have remained unchanged for decades. But now we have the freedom to choose a different kind of personal computer. One with a sleek, razor-thin design and stunning performance. The PC reimagined by Vizio. Sponsor of the Mid American Conference. We back the Mac. 
Today's Mid-American Conference game, Northern Illinois, Western Michigan, being brought to you by Allstate, their proud sponsor of the Allstate Sugar Bowl. Are you in good hands? Also by YP.com, click less, live more. By NFL Mobile from Verizon, built to bring you the game. And also by the BBVA Compass Bowl, January 5th in Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, absolutely. Chamber of Commerce type of football Saturday here in the western side of the Wolverine State of Michigan. Bright sunshine, temperature about 45 degrees. Sunshine should prevail throughout the course of this Mac West battle between Northern Illinois and Western Michigan. And I, uh, I certainly urge you to uh, buckle up because you are going to see uh, a lot of prominence in Mid American Conference talent on this football field today. That's Tommy Lee Lewis along with Jamison Wells in the kick return spots for the Huskies of Northern Illinois and that prolific offense will get their hands on the football. Hope you enjoy it. Game on in Kalamazoo's Waldo Stadium. And this will be Tommy Lee Lewis on the return from the 15. Nice return of 18 yards to the 33-yard line, and that's where we bring out Jordan Lynch and the Northern Illinois offense. They average about 37 points a game, Doug. Number one in points per game, number one in total offense, and number one in rushing offense, all led by Jordan Lynch. Yeah, the, the numbers they're racking up are off the charts, and, and you're right, Jordan Lynch is the man. Again, uh, Lynch, as we'll show you throughout the uh, the course of the afternoon, as they come out in this uh, this bunch set. Lynch, there is that quarterback draw by design. He got two to bring up second down and eight. All right, let's take a look at our starting lineups. So brought to you by Tim Hortons. It's a very young Northern Illinois offensive line. Leighton settles been a little bit banged up. We'll probably see a lot of Akeem Daniels and Keith Harris today. Martell Moore, their outstanding receiver. This is a very young offensive line as four fifth-year seniors departed. Andrew Ness, the redshirt freshman, makes the line calls from his center spot. Now Lynch will trigger that first throw of the afternoon and he's got Martell Moore. That's a first down. They needed eight. They got nine as Lynch connects with Martell Moore. Let's take a look at Bill Cubitt's Western Michigan Rocco defense. Keep an eye on Freddie Bishop and Trevante Bowles. They are both outstanding stout football players. Johnny Simon the Rover and Lewis Toller at the cornerbacks have played premium football for Western Michigan this year. And this is George Lynch. Look at the toughness wow. of Lynch. He got 11 to move the sticks. Doug, it's it's a zone read with power attached to it from that quarterbacking position. Yeah, and, and you know he, he's going to run the football a variety of ways. But did you see that he carried Freddie Bishop on his back, a 260-pound defensive lineman? What strength he has. Northern Illinois uh, on the move uh, on their first series of the day off play action. Lynch is going to air it out, and it was uh, way too long, intended for Martell Moore. Moore is their big play guy as you take a look at uh, Donald Seliscar, who was in coverage for Western Michigan. And that was a great job by Seliscar because that was a double route, and, and he, he, his discipline was all over it. Great, great coverage by Donald Seliscar. Jordan Lynch hits 62% of his throws. Throws it for better than 200 yards per game. But as we said, this Northern Illinois offense runs it at 250 yards <laughs> per game. Again, that quarterback design power from Jordan Lynch. Look at Lynch. That's wow. close to 10 more. As uh, and, and Bill Cuba told us this yesterday. He wants five, six, seven, eight. Western Michigan Broncos on Lynch around the football. That's all that, uh, that Coach Cubitt and defensive coordinator Rich Nagy talked about. Uh, we, we, we can't let Lynch beat him, beat us by himself like he's done to everybody else. All right, this is third down and short for Jordan Lynch. Now Western Michigan uh, showing you that uh, they can be sturdy and stout with Trevante Bowles and uh, Deontay Woody Legreer up front. Boy, the nose tackle, Trevante Bowles, he stacked it all up, and that was Kyle Lark that came in and cleaned it up for Western. Western 
Michigan, a, a very veteran defense up front. We've got a pair of fifth-year seniors in uh, Bishop and Legreer, fourth-year juniors in Bowles and Lark. So they're veteran, and they know what uh, the challenge is in front of them today. Now Keith Harris went in the slot. That straight quarterback uh, lead isolation uh, run play again from Jordan Lynch. This time uh, he ran straight into Travante Bowles and only picked up one. And this is a challenge now for Northern Illinois. One, Western Michigan is pretty darn stout on defense. Two, they run a 3 4, which they don't see that often. Totally different blocking assignments. Four wide now for Jordan Lynch. Take a look at it. I said almost 37 a game, but you know, you think the time of possession is more. Now they've got the quick strike capabilities. Bubble screen, Martell Moore makes the grab. Only got a couple. That's uh, that's a nice hit that uh, was put on Martell Moore by Cleveland Smith, who wears number 41, the DN. Yeah, th this is just a you know, quick little screen. That's just great pursuit getting to the football by Western Michigan. That was the Johnny Simon that really made the initial hit there. All right, this brings up a third down, and uh, let's let's call it five, long five, line to make at the 26-yard line. We got flags and whistles coming out of the secondary of Western Michigan. Did they just get a, a timeout before those flags came out? Yep. Got a timeout. You had uh, the back judge and the side judge were throwing flags. As we take a look at Bill Cubitt, I always love uh, being around Coach Cubitt and his football program. Tremendous amount of success, as you see, uh, has won the MAC West on a couple of occasions during his tenure here in Kalamazoo, and also has been to four bowl games under his helm. Yep. Uh, he's done a great job here. He's been here eight years. He's done a terrific job. This has been a nightmare season for him. He lost his number one receiver on the opening play of the season, and that was against Illinois. That was Timmy Keith. He's now lost his second uh, best receiver, Jamie Wilson, a true freshman. Yeah. Uh, he lost his quarterback. Uh, it, it's been a nightmare season offensively for Western Michigan with all the injuries. Yeah, not to mention, if you look at Dave Doran real quickly, he also had 140 receptions, the most in all of the FBS, and Jordan White graduate yep. and go to the National Football League with the New York Jets as well. Now remember, this is really four down territory for Northern Illinois, the way they do things. Third and five, the line to make is the 26-yard line of Western Michigan. Lynch to put it up. Wheel route for Tommy Lee Lewis. What an outstanding grab. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Tommy Lee Lewis elevating and coming down with a football for a quick six. Yeah, and, and, and this is well covered. This is just a great throw. I mean, that's a, that's a nice job by Lewis Toller. He's in pretty good shape here, but what a great throw to catch. Wow. Oh, Tommy Lee Lewis with the sensational touchdown grab as uh, that gets Matthew Sims on out of the hold of Ryan Neer, the punter, to add the PAT. A nine plays, 69 yard drive that Tommy Lee Lewis caps off. Lewis with a touchdown grab. Northern Illinois on the board first. Eggs, bacon, and pancakes. Denny's Everyday Value Slam is $4 every day. Wait, is that right? <laughs> Eggs, bacon, pancakes? Yeah, that's right. The $4 Everyday Value Slam. Only $4 every day. Only at Denny's. are you're not made of money so don't overpay for motorcycle insurance Geico see how much you could save nobody does what Papa John's does get a large double bacon six G's pizza topped with hickory smoked bacon and Julian cut Canadian bacon try one today only $11 or for just $1 more choose any large pizza even specialties behold the joy bliss 
and total delight that can only come from having someone else pay your mortgage for an entire year. This is what you'll experience if you win the Quicken Loan Skip a Year Mortgage Sweepstakes. Up to five winners will get to skip a year of mortgage payments, courtesy of Quicken Loans. Enter often at skipayear.com for more chances to experience this. The Skip a Year Mortgage Sweepstakes. One more way Quicken Loans is engineered to amaze. Hi there. Welcome to Tim Hortons Cafe and Bake Shop, where fresh always tastes better. Feel like something sweet? How about treating yourself to our new caramel apple bagel? It's big caramel and apple flavor. Together in a bagel. Try our new caramel apple bagel or any bagel for just 99 cents when you buy a coffee. How sweet is that? And try our other caramel apple baked goods too. Tim Hortons Cafe and Bake Shop, where quality really does meet value. Uh, Jordan Lynch accounts for uh, every bit of uh, the yardage on that Northern Illinois touchdown drive. And he got a lot of help, though, from wide receiver Tommy Lee Lewis. It's our good hands play of the day early on, brought to you by Allstate. That is a superb catch. Doug, you talk about high point in the football, huh? Oh, absolutely. And just a slight little push off there by, by the receiver, but it was slight. <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> No, Tommy Lee Lewis uh, on the board for Northern Illinois. About 155 pounder is uh, Tommy Lee Lewis, just a sophomore. Let's we'll see what uh, Western Michigan uh, can get accomplished as the Broncos will have uh, their hands on the football. Derek Duncan back in one of the deep spots. And this is going to beat Duncan from the eight yard line on the return. Bad return for Derek Duncan as he uh, knifed his way out near the 25 as uh, we say hello to that young man out of Holland, Michigan here on the western side of uh, the state. West Ottawa High School, Tyler Van Tubergen making his fifth start. Dougie threw for a career high 333 yards and a touchdown in the loss at Kent State last week but got picked three times as part of six Western Michigan turnovers. Yeah, and all those picks were because the ball was just a fraction late getting there. Now Van Tubergen on the roll. Gonna dump off underneath to Antoine Scriven. And Scriven will bolt his way out over the 35. That's uh, 14 yards at a first down. Let's take a look at our Tim Hortons Western Michigan Bronco offense. They are really banged up, as we said. Uh, Darion Chance and Eric Monette. Uh, Monette got to be a big play guy along with Josh Schaefer. This offensive line loses Terry Davison today, who's made 24 starts. He got banged up at the left tackle spot. As you hear the pads pop, as that Northern uh, Illinois defense uh, all over that first down call of Darian Chance. Chance, the 160 pound junior running back out of Lauder Hill, Florida. Alan Baxter along with Anthony Wells, the ball, Jefferson, Sean Progar. That is a terrific front four. Tyrone Clark and Jamal Bass lead the backers. And Jimmy Ward, one of the top three safeties along with Marlon Moore, so good in the secondary. Van Tubergen will fight for that strike. Outstanding throw to Josh Schaefer, the fourth year junior. Hey, all Schaefer did, he'll move the sticks here. Last week, nine catches for 151 yards of the TD at Kent State. Yeah, and I'll tell you, there was a little bit of pressure there, but uh, Van Tubergen, boy, he stepped up in the pocket and he threw a dart and he's got a strong arm. Oh yeah, he does. That's 17 yards in the Western Michigan first down. Now that inside handoff to Darian Chance. Chance trying to follow the blocks of John Deo. Deo wears number 71. Doug, you got two Big Ten transfers on this whole line. Deo, the uh, fifth year senior guard out of Michigan State, and Dan O'Neill right next to him from uh, the University of Michigan. Absolutely. Of course, uh, Deo just, he was uh, graduated from uh, Michigan State. Yeah. Transferred here this year for his fifth year. On uh, second and eight now. And Tubergen has Western Michigan on the march. Play action. Fires in the middle, and he is right on time as he hooks up with Eric Monette. Monette making his first grab of the day, the fifth-year senior, Eric Monette. Well, certainly not afraid to throw the football over the middle. 
And Van Tuberken steps up there and throws another dart. Nice. Lynette ran that route and uh, made that play at the 29 yard line. Van Tuberken trying to answer Jordan Lynch in Northern Illinois. Now back to the ground game. Shifty move from Darian Chance. Chance uh, take it down after a gain of a couple. Now, you know, uh, Willie Beaver's number 70 is making his first start at left tackle. And I'll tell you what, I've been watching him carefully. He has been for a redshirt freshman. This has been a great opening drive by him. He's really coming off the football. His pass protection has been really solid. Yeah, they lost uh, the 300 pounder, as I mentioned, Terry Davison. Davison made 24 straight starts, fourth year junior. So Beaver's play today is going to be very vital. Van Tuver could play action. Gonna look at though. Touchdown! Eric Monet! Oh, what a throw by Tyler Van Tuvergen as he hooks up with Eric Monet as we're going big play early on for both Northern Illinois and Western Michigan. Just like Coach Cuban told us yesterday, this young guy has got the talent. No question about that. He just needs the experience. What an opening drive by Van Tubergen. Tyler Van Tubergen is the ninth touchdown throw of the year. Adding the, uh, the PAT is Andrew Haldeman. Tyler Van Tubergen stepping into that throw to Eric Monet. We are tied at seven. Yeah, it's a Honda EU 2000. Super quiet, fuel efficient, and lightweight. Yeah, my generator's really loud. Oh, yeah, no kidding. Oh, yeah! She wants me! Maybe not! Honda EU Series Portable Generators. Lightweight, fuel efficient, and... What was that all about? Very quiet. com on your mobile. More ways to search, more ways to find. Only from AT&T. The stock market collapsed. Ordinary Americans paid the price. Savings evaporated. 401ks wiped out. But Congressman Bill Foster made out just fine. You see, Congressman Foster sold his investments just one day after Congressman attended a closed-door briefing in Washington about the financial crisis. Insider briefings, just-in-time stock sales. Congressman Foster got the parachute, you got the crash. The National Republican Congressional Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. Talk to me. You and you, talk to me. Join me, Kevin McHale, and the Trevor Project for Talk to Me, a campaign for conversation. Visit trevortalktome.org to learn how you can take part. And if you or someone you know is thinking about suicide, call the Trevor Lifeline at 866-488-7386. It's free, confidential, and there is always someone to talk to. Tied at seven apiece as uh, Eric Monet making that touchdown grab uh, from Tyler Van Tubergen. And, you know, Doug, you think about it, four for four for 72 yards, perfect on the drive. And he said, Man, I might have to match all these <laughs> points that Jordan Lynch is going to put up all day long. Well, you, you talk about a confidence uh, booster for that young man. And there you see Alex Carter in the back there looking on at his numbers also this season. Up, but 8,200 uh, yards in his career. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's an all Mid American Conference quarterback right there. Yeah, Alex Carter threw for a school record 3,873 yards a year ago. Yep. And 140 catches from Jordan White now in the NFL, as uh, we discussed. So Tommy Lee Lewis and Jamison Wells in the deep spots. And Jamison Wells will start from the 15. This drive will start at the 32-yard line. 
Doug Tyler Van Tubergen, uh, outstanding, made every throw in the book on this run. But made two big throws right over the middle. Here you see the second one right here. And then, of course, the touchdown grab right here. A uh, little breakdown in coverage right there. That was uh, Evans, the quarterback, that got beat. And, and we should mention that Rashawn Melvin, their normal starting left corner, is out today. It appeared as if that was duly noted. Oh, I think by so. <laughs> Bill Cubitt, son Ryan Cubitt, the co-offensive coordinator, and Tyler Van Tuberken. So back to Jordan Lynch, and uh, Lynch will Lynch misfire as he wanted Deron Brown. Now Lynch throwing the football on the move. How have you found him adapting to that part of the offense? Chandler Harness was sensational throwing the football on the run. You know, uh, frankly, I, I haven't seen a throw that Jordan Lynch can't make. I mean, he, 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 he threw the ball on the opening drive on a sprint out and, and threw a dart. That was well covered. Now off that play fake, look at Lynch. Lynch is like a 210 pound running back, ladies and gentlemen, and he will deliver blows on unsuspecting defenders. We take a look at our keys to the game brought to you by Five Hour Energy Coach Doug Graber. Go to work. Well, of course, for Northern, they've got an average five plus per yards. We'll come back to that as Northern is already up and ready to snap it. On this first down call. And this is Akeem Daniels. Daniels who wears number three, the young fella from Kissimmee, Florida, who averages better than five yards a carry. Go ahead, Doug. Well, and, and the second key for Northern, uh, they just have to hang tight until the fourth quarter because they are dominant in the fourth quarter, 52 points on the plus side. And again, we'll come back to this as Northern is up and ready to go again. So three wides to the top of your screen. And on that roll, Lynch will uh, deliver the strike. He put it in the hands of Deron Brown out of Morgan Park High School in Chicago. They really like Brown, a third-year sophomore. Yeah, and that was a throw going to his left, and he got his shoulders turned around and squared up and made a great throw there. Northern Illinois, two for two already on their, their third down opportunities. This is third and a short one. Usually means Jordan Lynch on that. That quarterback power. Well, he got stood up and belted out of that second level as, uh, once again, Cleveland Smith put that hit on him, who wears number 41 for Western Michigan. Here's the keys now for Western Michigan. Uh, they've had problems. 22 turnovers. That's third at FBS. They, they can't turn it over. And they've got to hold Lynch to 4.0 or less per rush. Right now, he's already averaging 5.2. Boy, it, it, Mike, the pace that that Northern Illinois runs the, their offense is absolutely incredible. And now this is an audible from the sideline. It's the only reason they're slowing down at all. But they just go so fast, they absolutely wear teams out. Now referee Tony Canella and his crew, they held things up for a second as they got the sticks move. Now Lynch on that first down throw, and he'll uh, complete it to Martell Moore just on that short out. So Moore making the catch in front of the Western Michigan bench in front of Donald uh, Sullivan. You know, and, and Martell Moore, I mean, he, he's a star. We've known that. He's a senior. He's a heck of a player. They're missing Perez Ashford, uh -huh. who all, is an outstanding receiver. All right, now back to the ground game with the tailback, Akeem Daniels. And look at all the brown shirted Broncos of Western Michigan in on that hit. Uh, leading the charge uh, for the Broncos was Kyle Lark. You mentioned Lark, Doug. Fourth year junior, big 235 pounder. Well, the key here is penetration, and they get it. And there's uh, Lark, and of course, that's also Jonathan Harden in on that hit as well. The backup nose tackle. They are going to sub a lot of people in here on defense up front all day as Western. Northern Illinois, perfect three for three on third down. Lynch is going to air it out for Jamison Wells and had too much air under that football. So now let's see Dave Doran's decision here on fourth and four, and he's going to send the punt team up. Well, you know what? That's a little bit of a surprise because they are, they are 12 of 15, and they're not. Once they cross that 50-yard line, they're not afraid to <laughs> no, go for it. They're in go mode, aren't they? Now Ryan uh, Near, who averages 39 yards. Per punt with a long of 50 on the year. This may be a fake. I see a lot of checking going on. Nope, they're going to punt it away. 
Amir is going to hang it high. And that's Ryan Fields on the Western Michigan fair catch. So in this 7 7 tie, Tyler Van Tubergen. And the Broncos will get the football for the second time. Good one going on in Kalamazoo. Where are we going? Just a second. Just, just one second. Get out of the car. Are you okay? <laughs> In the car. The EPA estimated 42 MPG Highway Chevy Cruze Eco for wherever life takes you. And now qualified buyers can get 0% APR financing for 48 months on a 2012 Cruze. I'm your worn out wiper blades. Hey, nice air fresh. And when you got cut rate car insurance, nobody helped make sure you were covered for this. So get an Allstate agent and be better protected from mayhem. <laughs> like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. Are you in good hands? I'm Bob Dold and I approve this message. Newspapers call Brad Schneider's attacks laughable, unfair, troubling dishonesty. Federal documents show Schneider's company has no revenue, not even a phone number. Is it a fake business existing only to take advantage of tax loopholes? That would explain why Schneider's hiding his tax returns. But Schneider supports raising taxes on middle-income people. Brad Schneider, hiding his taxes, raising ours, another dishonest politician. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Maybe you should go to your shelter and get a mature dog. Who will make your blues disappear. How's that for tricks? I got picked. Wow. A lot of offensive excitement here in, uh, in the first uh, eight minutes and some change of uh, this opening quarter. Michael Regai, Doug Graber, all of our terrific uh, ESPN Plus crew with you. It's a brilliant Saturday, final Saturday in October of Mid-American Conference football. Key one in the MAC West is uh, Northern Illinois looking to win their 13th in a row today, and they know it won't be easy. Uh, Mac West play against Tyler Van Tubergen, Western Michigan. But again, just a, only Alabama and Oregon, just to uh, give you a measuring stick, have accomplished over the last year and a half of FBS football what Northern Illinois has. They both, both, all three of them won 16 of their last 17. Now run the toss sweep with Bruce Fields. This is Fields' first carry of the day. Brian Fields, excuse me, the 196-pound uh, fourth-year junior. Had a big day, Doug, uh, against Ball State with uh, uh, close to 100 yards in the TD two weeks ago. Boy, uh, this is a, a very tight formation for Western, which is very unusual for them. Now stay with Fields as he's getting the work at the running back spot as he angles his way near the 20 yard line going to bring up third and short. Well, you know and, and these are really two of the better defensive football teams in the Mid-American Conference this year. I think Bowling Green is the best but these two defenses are right there. They're down into short one. Darian Chance took a hit but powered his way near the 24 yard line. As he got off that first hit, Doug, and that'll move the sticks first down, Western Michigan. Uh, that, that, that's just tough north and south running, uh, and he broke the tackle, which good backs do, and he was running north and south. Nothing fancy. Look at this formation. Van wow. Zubergen quickly <laughs> will put the football in the hands of uh, one of his wide receivers, Daniel Braverman, but, uh, but as you saw, and Northern Illinois defense, so right there. This is a this is a veteran defensive football team as well. Well, that formation, believe it or not, was called. That's the lonesome polecat. Is what that <laughs> formation is called. And uh, the the uh, Braverman was kind of lonesome when he got the football because they uh, they didn't block it very well. Now lost six, second down at 16 now for Tyler Van Tubergen. Out of the gun. 
Fired middle. Nice move. Darian Chance. Chance got 13 of the 16 back. Doug Darian Chance, he settles down behind those big old linemen. He's 5'6", a buck 60. He's hard to find, but you know, it, it, this is great. To, uh, good, nice job. Good block by the wide out. Tough north and south front. And now it's third and two. Very makeable third and two. Second, third down look today for Western Michigan to quarterback Tyler Van Tubergen. They converted the first one. Van Tubergen out of the gun. Quickly drills that throw, and he's got a first down wow. as he found Clark Musman. Musman who wears number 46. He's really the fourth tight end, H back, but he can catch the football to move the chains. Well, this is just a simple little option route, and he put it right on the dot, right on the outside number, and here's the lonesome polecat again. Look at this formation. Van Tubergen's going to keep the football. <laughs> now, that's not something that Tyler does a lot of now. This is a Jordan Lynch, but he got eight out of that uh, that formation that uh, bring back thoughts of something that you draw up on uh, on the schoolyards, right? This, this is Tiger Ellison's old lonesome polecat formation. That's what it is. And they're moving the football. Van Tubergen for the second time got the throw to Daniel Braverman true freshman where's number 80 made the catch you know Bill Cubitt told us yesterday we're going to see some formations that even I've never seen <laughs> Bill I've seen yeah. that one before though yeah. I got you on that yeah. one <laughs> yeah, it looks like now as Western Michigan's going to huddle up they're going to get more conventional here yeah. well, they are going to go quickly now on this third down and very short out of the stacked eye Van Tubergen gonna throw the football. Did it did yes. he make the grab? Finally he made the grab. Devin Brandt, who's a linebacker that they got in and they get him in on the jumbo. Let's watch Brandt. How many times does he bobble? One, One two, two, three, four, five. <laughs> got that With a foot down. down. Got that foot down in bounds. <laughs> Ah, that's what makes the game so great, huh? Devin Brandt, the linebacker in on offense, his first catch of the day. That Tubergen will wheel that throw out of the sideline, and he's got Brian Fields, who made the grab. Fields finally got collared by Demetrius Stone. Van Tubergen put that football in a very tight window. Watch the block here by number 21, Anton Scriven, right here, right there. That's the, it was a great throw, but that was the block. Here's the lonesome polecat again. Now you go with three offensive linemen. Van Tubergen fires it complete as it's over the head of uh, Eric Monette. Well, this formation, Doug Graber, we're going to have to break this formation down as we go back to the Brian Fields catch. Boy, what a block by Scriven right there. That's a good effort by him. Western Michigan on the move as uh, we're inside the two and a half minute mark here at quarter number one. A lot of electricity early on, huh? Oh, big time. Musman across the formation. Run the football with Darian Chance. Look at Chance battle his way inside the 20. They'll put him down at the 19 yard line, but that's eight yards for Darian Chance. Doug against Minnesota earlier this year. Young fella had 144 yards in the touchdown. And what turned out to be a very close four point Western Michigan loss. Third and short here, third and a long, long one. Same formation, Chance with a football. He'll bounce it outside. Chance to the corner and got bodied out of bounds by Jimmy Ward. That hard hitting free safety. Darian Chance running with a purpose for Bill Cuban. Well, you know, he, he's 5'5 five, five and 161 pounds. But boy, is he quick. Nice stiff arm right there. And that's a nice open field tackle by Ward. Right up to the line of scrimmage again with a very unorthodox formation. Van Tuber going to fight underneath. Stretching for the end zone. Touchdown, Eric Monet. His second touchdown catch here in the opening quarter on the throws from Tyler Van Tubergen. Western Michigan has given Northern Illinois some of their own business going with a very fast, rapid offense, no huddle, all kinds of formations. They've got them on their heels. 
after Monette's second touchdown catch in the opening quarter. Andrew Haldeman, the lad, the PAT. Hey, how about Tyler Van Tubergen? Young fella says, I know Jordan Lynch is the guy who's the headline grabber. Van Tubergen has been exceptional in the opening quarter in the stead of number 14, the injured Alex Carter. Well, it was interesting looking at the tape of uh, Van Tubergen uh, yesterday. I, honestly, I was surprised because, you know, he's got a lot of ability, and you could surely see that in the game we watched last week against Kent State where he threw for over 300 yards. But I'll tell you what, he's got a lot of arm strength. He's got accuracy. Uh, the biggest thing he did not have in a key element of any Bill Cuban passing offense is the timing. His timing was off. He was just a little bit slow on some of the throws. And there you see Tyler right there. He's on the phone to Ryan Cubit upstairs. All right, let's take a look at our Denny's value player. And uh, who do you have? Who do you have identified here, Doug, to keep close tabs on today? Well, I'd say, you know, of course, uh, Windsor and Baxter, six and a half sacks apiece. Sellis Carr and Lewis Toller have been great coverage guys for Western. All right, Tommy Lee Lewis and Giorgio Bowers in the deep spots, and this is Lewis on the run for the 15. Look out, Tommy Lee Lewis with speed, and he got tripped up by Andrew H. Haldeman. Haldeman made the hit, or Lewis might have been out the backside and all the way to the house. I'll tell you what, this is a kicker making a great play because if, if Haldeman does not make this tackle, he may have scored. That's a great effort by the kicker, Haldeman. Might have saved six. Tommy Lee Lewis has already uh, put the six on the board with his touchdown catch. So third possession here in the opening quarter for Jordan Lynch, a highly decorated quarterback, over one of the winningest programs in all of the football bowl subdivision. That first down carry for Northern Illinois uh, comes from uh, their actually the third tailback. It's Keith Harris Jr. He's a freshman out of Chicago. All of you in the Chicagoland area remember his fine prep career. We haven't seen Leighton settle today. Settle banged up this week in practice. Yep. Lynch on that quarterback power, but he got dragged down. Freddie Bishop off the corner, 260-pound, fifth-year senior. There's Freddie out of Carleton Airport High School, Inkster, Michigan, the hometown. Yeah, Freddie really has been a, a great senior leader for this Western defense this year. It's going to bring up a third and five. Northern Illinois, three for four on the third down conversions today. Four wide, blitz coming. Lynch on the wheel route and dropping the football. Was Tommy Lee Lewis making the, the sign dug like he that football got right in the bright sunshine and he lost it? Yeah, he did. And it's a little pick right right here. See the pick right there? That was very well executed. They, they, they picked the corner off. And uh, what can you say? That's just a flat drop. Oh, Tommy Lee Lewis had six more. He's been in the end zone once today on the TD catch, and he would have had another six there. Ryan Near to punt it for the second time today. Near will hang it high. And football hit at the 17-yard line and took a Western Michigan bounce back upfield. They'll start at the 24-yard line. All right, let's uh, take a look and graphically, beautifully done. Tom Boschenik and uh, our graphics crew. Tyler Van Tubergen, after he had to take over for Alex Carter, who played the first four. But, Doug, remember, Carter threw for 3,800 yards and 31 touchdowns a year ago. Yeah, the key number there for Tyler was the nine picks he's thrown up to this point. Today, the young man who wears number two, the fourth-year junior out of Holland, Michigan, Tyler Van Tubergen, has uh, done an outstanding job. Now run toss sweep, and this is Darian Chance. And Chance got some good blocks. And there's those veterans on the right side, the fifth-year senior John Dale, the Michigan State transfer, and the fifth-year senior Dan O'Neill, the Michigan Wolverine transfer. And Bill Cuban told us flat out yesterday, this is the best offensive line he's had in his tenure here at Western Michigan. 
Tyler Van Tubergen, Eric Monet, Darian Chance. They've had the Husky dog kind of looking at things from a different perspective. Tommy Lee Lewis with a touchdown grab. Eric Monette has hold in a pair for Western Michigan. Broncos lead it by seven. AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network, now covering 3,000 more 4G cities and towns than Verizon. AT&T, rethink possible. Up next for career day, quarterback Aaron Rodgers. That State Farm agent said she helps people. What do you do? I play football. That's not a job. Uh, well. Did you save my dad hundreds with the discount double check? No, but I was MVP last year. Mr. Hubble says trophies are for people with self-esteem issues. Who's Mr. Hubble? That's Rod Hubble. No, it is not. For savings, we're best in class. Hey, Roger! This got double check! Get to a better state. State Farm. New Pink Lemonade 5-Hour Energy? 5-Hour Energy supports the Avon Foundation for Women Breast Cancer Crusade. So I can get the energized feeling I need and support a great cause? I'm sold. Pink Lemonade 5-Hour Energy. Yeah, and a portion of every sale goes to the Avon Foundation for Women Breast Cancer Crusade. I'm sold. New Pink Lemonade 5-Hour Energy. Get the alert, energized feeling you need and support breast cancer research and access to care. I'm Judy Biggert, and I approve this message. Millionaire former Congressman Bill Foster. Foster's company laid off 10% of its workers, even as it turned a profit. Right before Christmas, Foster handed out pink slips, then built lavish new corporate offices in Wisconsin. In Congress, Foster voted to send American jobs to China and back job-killing tax hikes. Bill Foster laid off workers and sent jobs to China. No wonder we fired him. Habitat for Humanity builds houses and so much more. A Habitat build site is where hanging a door opens a world of opportunity, where turning a screw turns the page, and where a simple key can unlock a brighter future. You see, Habitat for Humanity builds houses and so much more. What will you build? Visit Habitat.org to learn more. Solving murders one argument at a time. Bones, tonight at 5 and 6 on My 50 Chicago. How about that for our most exciting 15 minutes of Mid-American Conference football? Western Michigan with a 14-7 lead. Delighted you're with us today. Don't go anywhere. There's more coming. Michael Regai, my partner Doug Graber, and three touchdown passes. Uh, Jordan Lynch hits Tommy Lee Lewis to get Northern Illinois on the board. Terrific catch by Lewis. But Tyler Van Tubergen has responded with his wideout Eric Monette for a pair. Unbelievable. You talk about a fast moving first quarter and, and great play by Lynch and Van Tubergen. Wow. I mean, that was something. And we've seen a, a little bit of Western Michigan's uh, stoutness defensively as well as during the last couple of drives they've been able, although I'm sure Jordan Lynch figures we had six more if Tommy Lee Lewis didn't lose the football in the sun. That Western Michigan defense is flying to the football. And they they have been very, very impressive. All right, let's see what uh, this drive for Tyler Van Tubergen in Western Michigan will bring. This first down call is Darian Chance, and he got rocked for well, this veteran <laughs> Northern Illinois defensive front seven that we'll talk about. Why don't we do it right now? I mean, it's a, this front seven of Northern Illinois defensively, look, the offense gets all the accolades yep. usually. Jordan Lynch and how prolific they are. Veteran and one of the best in the MAC, one of the best in the FBS. Absolutely. Three defensive ends, and there you see Mr. Wells who made that last hit. Three outstanding defensive ends that can rush the passer on this Northern defense. Well, there it is. Uh, and again, uh, there you go. Uh, third in the Mid American Conference, but they're even better in the red zone. We'll tell you about that in a moment. And so Tyler Van Tubergen has said, I'm not going to read all about your numbers. I'm going to go attack you, which the Western Michigan quarterback has done. And now Bill Cubitt, who serves as uh, offensive coordinator, his son Ryan, 
who uh, quarterbacked here at Western Michigan, his co-offensive coordinator. And uh, let's go back, and I mentioned uh, the front seven for Northern Illinois. Doug, this, uh, they just absolutely stymied Terry Bowden's offense last week. Yeah, that, that was uh, Progar, Windsor, Baxter. There's Progar again. I mean, there, there's Windsor. Wow. I mean, th th they absolutely, and this is a good, accurate passing offense, and they just totally shut them down with that fierce rush. And they were able to do it with four. They didn't have to blitz. Well, there it is. Um, uh, last week, Akron averages 33 a game. They didn't even give up 200 total yards, did the Northern Illinois D. Uh, the, the, the five sacks, 11 tackles for loss. And in the red zone, they are absolutely, it's almost mind-boggling yep. what they haven't given up this year. Play action for Van Tuberken. The rush is coming, and he's going to get rid of the football in the direction of Eric Monette falling incomplete. But uh, the heat was on uh, from Alan Baxter. There's uh, Baxter also got uh, some help from uh, Sean Evans. Watch Baxter number 90. Yeah, uh, Baxter six and a half sacks. Uh, he, he has been terrific. He and Progar both there were closing in on Van Tuberken. Sean Progar, a young man who uh, certainly one of the most prominent defensive players we have uh, in the Mid-American Conference. There's an audible. Nice distribution of the uh, 11 times running the football. This is throw number 14. And Sean Evans on the breakup of that uh, that quick in route that was intended for Eric Monette. I'll, I'll tell you, uh, uh, you know, Tyler Van Tubingen has been outstanding. I'll tell you, a surprise for me has been Willie Beavers, number 70, that left tackle making his first start. Uh, he handled Alan Baxter easily on that last play, one on one. All right, they're behind the sticks here, though. It's third and yep. ten, third and long. They are four for four in their previous opportunities. Pressure coming. Van Tubergen is going to go down. Sean Progar, who wears number 95 on the hit. Anthony Wells, his mate, also gave him some help. We have, uh, though, a flag from the side judge. Did, did Progar get a burst early? Yes, I, I, I absolutely thought that he did. Wait for the call here. Offsides, defense number 91. Five-yard penalty remains and third down. Progar. Yeah, they, uh, you know, because I, I, I just was uh, kind of thinking to myself, if they're going to get off that quick, they're going to have to vary their cadence a little bit. But uh, they got him. He was definitely offsides. Now that third and ten becomes third and five now, after they got Anthony Wells to, to jump. Play action, Ben Tubergen. Going to come underneath. He had it there, but he missed Gabe Hughes. Hughes is a true freshman tight end. Where's number 12? Uh, he was running that drag route, and Van Tubergen missed him. Yeah, and that time, that time, Baxter clearly beat the freshman Willie Beavers at left tackle, and that was the difference on that play. First time today, and of course, Baxter is a veteran. He's a senior. Uh, believe me, if you overset on him or, do, or underset, he's going to take advantage. He did right there. It's the first time that uh, Jay Schroeder, who averages better than 43 per punt, will step onto the football field. And he will drive this to Tommy Lee Lewis. Look out! Tommy Lee Lewis has come free! An outstanding return for Lewis as he was one move away from busting it again as the punter Jay Schroeder got him on the ground. What a day for Tommy Lee Lewis! He's caught the touchdown pass. He's busted a big kickoff return. Another large punt return for Northern Illinois. Hey, Peyton. Welcome back. Thanks, Papa. What are we going to do to kick off this season? Same thing as last season. One million free Papa John's pizzas. Good idea. Two million free pizzas. I like it. No, 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 no. One million free Papa John pizzas. Two million pizzas it is. Let's do it. All season long, Papa John's has two million free pizzas for Papa Rewards members. Sign up now at PapaJohns.com, where a large double bacon six cheese pizza is just $11 or any large $1 more. Better ingredients. Better pizza. Papa, Papa John's. John's. Really? Two million free pizzas? Wait till you see what's next. 
At GoDaddy, we're not only hot for technology, we're hot for football. Right, team? That's right. The GoDaddy team is excited to present the 2013 GoDaddy.com Bowl live on ESPN, January 6th, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So catch the 2013 GoDaddy.com Bowl live from Mobile, Alabama. Brought to you by GoDaddy.com. The 2013 GoDaddy.com Bowl. It's the Mid-American and Sunbelt Conference Showdown. Catch it. The stock market collapsed. Ordinary Americans paid the price. Savings evaporated. 401ks wiped out. But Congressman Bill Foster made out just fine. You see, Congressman Foster sold his investments just one day after Congressman attended a closed-door briefing in Washington about the financial crisis. Insider briefings, just-in-time stock sales. Congressman Foster got the parachute, you got the crash. The National Republican Congressional Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. When I grow up, I want to be a baseball player. I will be the pitcher because they get to do something all the time. Not like the other guys who stand around in the sun. That must get really hot. If your child is sick over and over again, it could be PI, a defect in the immune system that affects millions. Early detection can give children a chance to dream. My plan is to be the youngest pitcher to ever throw a no-hitter. I haven't done it yet, but my mom and dad tell me I'm getting really close. 47 Western Michigan with the uh, the touchdown lead uh, here early second quarter and I want to remind all of you that coming up December 21st you can catch one of the premier bowl games this bowl season Beef O'Brady's Bowl right near my partner Doug Graber's uh, homestead St. Petersburg Florida on December 21st for more info visit BeefO'Brady'sBowl.com and do that today nothing like the college football bowl season. And nothing like Tommy Lee Lewis. 44-yard kickoff return, now 44-yard punt return, longest of the year. Jordan Lynch back to work, and he's on the edge outside the numbers with room. Jordan Lynch. Well, that is a terrific touchdown saving tackle by that Western Michigan free safety, the young sophomore Justin Curry out of Big Rapids, Michigan. You know, and, and Western has been doing a good job, but I'll tell you what, that, that was the entry, the Randy option, and it was a loaded option. Now Lynch is going to keep the football itself. Look at all the hats. One of six of them around uh, the quarterback of Northern Illinois is again Justin Curry came up from his free safety spot and uh, Curry also uh, got some help from Big Travante Bowles number 55. Well you can see the numbers there in the red zone. So Northern Illinois do it in the red zone. It's brought to you by our friends at Verizon Wireless. Lynch will keep the football and he got stood up. Well, how about that shot from Justin Curry? Curry again along with Desmond Bozeman out of Fort Lauderdale, the middle linebacker. Well, that sets up now third and about eight for the Huskies. And I'll tell you, boy, Lynch has taken a lot of shots today. Three of five on third down conversions. The, the line to make is at the two-yard line. So Northern Illinois can pick up the first down without getting in the end zone. Lynch. Wants to put it up. Came underneath. Touchdown. He hit Deron Brown, who settled down near the goal line. Lynch found him for the Northern Illinois TD. Is boy, they're thinking run, 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 Doug. And then Doug Lynch, uh, Jordan Lynch spotted up Deron Brown. Yeah, uh, this is the third option. Everything was very well covered to the outside. That was option one and two. Came back to Deron Brown, who did a nice job of sitting right down in the zone and finding a soft spot. Now the sophomore out of Chicago, Morgan Park High School, Deron Brown with a TV catch. Matthew Sims will add the PAT. It's worth another look. Jordan Lynch saw Brown in the scene. We're even at 14 apiece.
Marathon is a proud sponsor of the Mid-American Conference. We back the Mac. Hi there. Welcome to Tim Hortons Cafe and Bake Shop, where fresh always tastes better. Feel like something sweet? How about treating yourself to our new caramel apple bagel? It's big caramel and apple flavor. Together in a bagel. Try our new caramel apple bagel or any bagel for just 99 cents when you buy a coffee. How sweet is that? And try our other caramel apple baked goods too. Tim Hortons Cafe and Bake Shop, where quality really does meet value. Make tomorrow awesome with Xfinity TV from Comcast. Right now, you can get Xfinity TV for just $14.99 a month for six months with HD DVR service free for three months. Call 1-877-342-0115 today. Get the top networks and popular channels like AMC and Discovery in digital quality. Plus, never miss a thing with HD DVR service. Record your favorite shows and watch them on your schedule in stunning HD. Call 1-877-342-0115 and get Xfinity TV for just $14.99 a month for six months. Don't forget to ask how you can get Xfinity On Demand with the best in entertainment anytime on any device. Plus, premium channels like HBO and Showtime. Get Xfinity TV for just $14.99 a month for six months with HD DVR service free for three months. Tomorrow could be awesome if you call today. Call 1-877-342-0115 and make the switch now. Xfinity, the future of awesome. Now Jordan Lynch has uh, answered the pair of touchdown throws from Tyler Van Tubergen, the Western Michigan quarterback. He's thrown his second of the first half. And, and Doug Graber, you know, every day, a 61 yard drive earlier, Jordan Lynch responsible for all of them. Yep. 39 yard drive here, same thing. Yep. And, and here's the numbers. Listen to this now. Lynch is averaging 5.1 per rushing attempt. Mm -hmm. That may sound gaudy. But his average is 7.1. <laughs> they are actually holding him down. The uh, ho the whole Northern offensive team average per rush is 4.3. So as usual with Northern, it's all Jordan Lynch. You know all of you uh, Northern Illinois fans and college football fans remember the name of Chandler Harness and how spectacular he has been and was. This Northern Illinois program. And yet Jordan Lynch has come in and absolutely not missed the beat. As uh, Brian Fields is uh, going to take a knee in the end zone as Western Michigan uh, will start uh, from the 25 yard line. All right, uh, I mentioned Chandler Harnish, and Doug, without question, one of the finest, most highly decorated, and rightfully so, quarterbacks ever in Mid American Conference history. But you can make a case. <laughs> that Jordan Lynch is surpassing his productivity in this his first year as a starter. And of course, yeah, oh, absolutely. Just look at the numbers. Of course, Harnish now a member of the Indianapolis Colts. Western Michigan now finds himself all even again at 14 apiece. Van Tubergen to come to work. That wheel route is off the hands of the uh, the H back, the full back, and of course is uh, and Musman. Chad Clark Musman, the fourth year junior. Yeah, it would have been a good catch, but it was catchable. How impressed are all of you here with the, the work, though, of uh, Tyler Van Tubergen today? And Tubergen has had some tremendous moments. He's had some shaky moments, as you would imagine. Going back to work through the air. We adjusted that sidearm, but how about the close on the football of free safety? Jimmy Ward, there's Ward, the junior hard hitter out of Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, that's, I mean, that was straight man to man, and Ward has the skills of a corner playing the safety position. And Joe Windsor made a great inside move and was right in the face of Van Tubergen on that play. That would, would have been a really tough completion. Northern Illinois has some of the uh, the top pass rushers in all of the FBS. Van Tubergen has got to step up. A lot of green in front of him. First down and more. Tyler Van Tubergen. That angle out of bounds at the 39-yard line. That's 14 yards and a first down for Van Tubergen. And he had to scramble because Windsor was closing on him again. Just take a look at the pressure. Watch Windsor inside. Number 97, all over Van Tubergen. 
He got 14 to move the sticks. Fresh set of downs. Western Michigan. Now back to the ground game with Darian Chance. Just nothing there. That uh, that stout front four of Northern Illinois closed that down. Got some help from Victor Jock too. First time we've called Jock today, yep. Doug. He's the middle linebacker, the fifth-year senior. Well, you know, it's interesting. Most teams are fortunate to have one defensive end that can really rush the passer. Northern has three in Progart, Baxter, and Windsor. And I'll tell you, they can just take a game over on you if you're not careful. Yeah, terrific. Nabal Jefferson and Ken Bishop, the two D tackles on the interior. Now firing the quick slant is Van Tubergen. Outstanding grab made uh, in traffic by Josh Schaefer. Schaefer's second catch of the day for the fourth year junior. And that was Johnny uh, Fauston on the coverage, and he was all over that. That really, uh, they needed a perfect throw to fit it in there, and Van Tubergen did it again. That's his first completion, first uh, pass that he's completed after he missed five in a row. It's going to bring up a third down and four now. The line to make is at the 48-yard line of Western Michigan. Van Tubergen gunning the out. Going to depend on the spot as the catch was made. But then stepping out of bounds was that true freshman, Gabe Hughes. And I think Hughes might have lost uh, lost vicinity of where he was. Doug. Yeah, he, he stepped out of bounds he, before the sticks. Absolutely. Uh, this should have been a first down. He's got to get those pads turned and get the pads down and get the first down. He didn't know where he was at. Fourth and one going. Out of that stick down. Van Tubergen started to run option. And this might be a false start, though. Northern no. Illinois. Oh, did they First get a timeout? timeout? All right. Northern Three Illinois seconds. got the time. Uh, Dave Doran said, wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. <laughs> he and his defensive coordinator, Jay Neiman. Yeah. When you start, Doug, all your years on the defensive side of the ball, when you start seeing that offense get out of that huddle, sprint to the line of scrimmage, that's like a fire drill going off on you, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And they were totally unprepared for that. And Western Michigan has been doing that for years. And they will, uh, on, on short yardage situations like this, fourth and one, and also in the goal line, uh, they will come at you with power personnel. They will sprint to the line of scrimmage and snap it. And, uh, and try to get you off balance, and they did it. They forced a timeout. And we spend a lot of time, and rightfully so, extolling the virtues of this Northern Illinois defense. Here's some of the leaders. Hey, Alan Baxter and Joe Windsor, both tied for second with six and a half sacks. Rashawn Melvin, who we haven't seen today, and Jimmy Ward, as we mentioned, two of the finest in the secondary around the map. All right, that's fourth and one. Dairy and Chance, I don't know. It's going to depend on the spot. Well, Chance got rudely greeted as uh, making the first hit was Alan Baxter. Baxter then had a lot of help from his buddies up front. Well, take a look at the right side of the offensive line, but they slanted to it. Boy, I don't know. This is good. You know, he's 5'5 five, five and 161 pounds. He lowers those pads, though, buddy. He gets after it. He's a powerful, powerful small back. And here comes the chains out, and this is going to be tight. We will see how uh, referee Tony Canella and his crew, Canella, of course, uh, wearing the white hat today. Darian Chance wondering if he picked this up or not. Doug, we, we talked about Western Michigan's offense, and uh, that will be enough to move the change first down. Your time here, defensive coordinator in the Mid-American Conference at Ball State. How difficult was a week of preparation for Bill Cubitt's offense? Well, extremely difficult, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, with all the new players and, and their receivers have been a rotating door all day long uh, all the, for the whole year. And it's always tough to prepare for this defense. They'll go four wide and yet run the football with Darian Chance, but not much there along that right side of the Northern Illinois defensive front. As Nabal Jefferson was there to lead the stop along with Ken Bishop. There's yep. Bishop who wears number 93. 61308. And I'll tell you, on that last play, uh, 
you were high in the press box here, and I'll tell you, the pads, I mean, you can hear those oh, collisions. Yeah. I mean, they are getting after it now. Yeah. That, this offensive line of Western Michigan and that defensive front of Northern Illinois, I mean, they are getting after it. The pads, they are a popping to be sure as we approach the 10 minute mark in this 14 14 tie. Second and long, Van Tubergen with pressure. And that throw is uh, incomplete. He was looking again uh, for uh, Josh Schaefer. Schaefer, the 6'2 uh, the wide receiver. And again, that was the pressure now. Watch the top here, the left of your screen. There's Windsor right there at the 97. He had to throw it before he was quite ready. And, uh, and the, boy, the pressure from these defensive ends of Northern is starting to have an effect. Third and long. Can Van Tubergen pick it up? Five of seven on the third down conversions. Nice day in moving the chain so far. Van Tubergen, that he's coming. Sack time, Northern Illinois. That football came out. But either referee Tony Canella is going to say, uh, you were down and sacked, or he's going to get him for intentional and grounding, one, one or the two. other. Yeah, absolutely. Boy, the pressure is really starting to take an effect. Ruling on the forward pass. Intentional grounding, number two. Spot foul, loss of down, fourth down. Well, let's take a look. Now, there was a receiver in the vicinity, but just look at the pressure here. That's Baxter and Progar. Yeah, I, that, I, I think that's a good call. So it was going to bring up fourth down anyway, whether uh, yeah. it was uh, the sack or uh, ultimately what was ruled the intentional ground. First punt of the afternoon. Schroeder will hit this line drive. Tommy Lee Lewis got put down right away doing the work on uh, the special teams for Western Michigan. Uh, Kelvin Hill, a freshman running back out of the state of Florida. Hey, how does Bill Cupid, the head coach of Western Michigan, keep it light here? You've got tennis racket home <laughs> run derby. Yeah. Check Come this strong. out. This was yesterday <laughs> afternoon after their walkthrough, and we had a lot of fun watching it, and they had fun doing it. They're trying, they, they got to get it in the uh, stands yeah. to be a home run. There's the first one. Got to like that. Jordan Lynch coming back to work, and he delivered uh, a throw that was a little bit too high. Tommy Lee Lewis got rocked and wasn't able to hang on the football. Well, how apropos to I told Bill Cubitt about three hours to the east of here, World Series game That's number right. three with the state of Michigan's own Detroit Tigers tonight. So Cubitt said, I'm going to see if I can get the Tigers some help with my guys going deep. Great way to loosen them up before a big game. But the players had a ball with it. They really did. We enjoyed seeing it as well. On second and ten, now back to the ground game for Northern Illinois. And they give the football to their freshman tailback, uh, Keith Harris Jr. Again, their their number one tail is Leighton Settle, uh, the 200-pound junior. We have not seen Settle today as uh, he was banged up in practice this week. He's here on the trip. He's dressed, but we haven't seen him in game action as of yet. Keith Harris, uh, a true freshman out of Chicago. He's been impressive. Lynch at third and four will fire that strike that Tommy Lee Lewis, or Tommy Lee Lewis and Martell Moore. Uh, these two have been big playmakers for Dave Doran uh, this year in the Huskies. Yeah, and, and here's the one on one matchup right there. That's just a good timing and an excellent throw. That's tough to defend. They went after a backup corner, Garrett Smith, a third year sophomore. Yep. But we come inside the nine minute mark now and his 14 all tie bubble screen put it in the hands of guess who Tommy Lee Lewis this time that Western Michigan secondary closed down and uh, making the hit was a uh, Terry Eastman he's been wears number eight he's a junior linebacker yeah, and the pursuit from the defensive front was excellent on that play. And uh, now we have Travante Bowles in at nose tackle, but they've been rotating those down three linemen has Western. Jet sweep, put it in the hands of Tommy Lee Lewis, tried to make a cut, and uh, got taken down after a short game. 
In on that stop, Johnny Simon, the Rover. Thorpe List nominee. Led the team in tackles in 2011, doing the same thing here in 2012. There's a good look at Johnny Simon. Yeah, all Mac last year. That was a great job by Salas Carr uh, to hold his point as the right corner and give Simon a chance to make the play. Third down and three for Jordan Lynch. He'll put it up, and that throw is broken up. Outstanding defensive play by Donald Selasar. Selasar, the sophomore out of Winter Haven, Florida. Straight man coverage, and he undercuts it right there and gets that right hand in. That's terrific. That's two great plays in a row by Selasar. This will be the third punt of the afternoon now for Ryan Near. Darian Chance for Western Michigan. Set to receive it inside his own 15 yard line. Near will hang it high. And Chance will fair catch it at the 12 yard line. 734 left in this first half. An outstanding football game going on in the Mac West as Northern Illinois and Western Michigan are tied at 14 apiece and again remember Western Michigan without their starting quarterback highly decorated just tremendous with his proficiency a year ago in Alex Carter. Yep and a, a devastating blow. Uh, the middle finger of his throwing hand his right hand he hit a helmet or a shoulder pad on his follow through terribly a mangled finger. Uh, Possibly a chance to come back late yeah, in the season. Maybe. maybe. He wants to, but maybe. It depends on, uh, of course, the medical staff's decision here. This is Darian Chance. Aren't you amazed at how tough this 160 pounder, great leverage runs tackle to tackle? Absolutely. I mean, he is flat getting after it. And the right side of that offensive line is coming off the football. And. Northern rushes the passer so well, you're going to have to have some balance to keep them uh, honest. Give Chance second seven on that first down call, second and three. Again, Darian Chance will try to make a move there. Is going to come up short of the first down sticks as Alan Baxter was in on the hit along with Victor Jock. Yeah, and you know, the, the one thing offensively, you just cannot afford to get yourself in third and long against Northern Illinois. Uh, you know, between Windsor, Windsor, Baxter, and Progar, look out, buddy. When, when you let them, uh, uh, you know, get that weight forward and get off the football, you're going to have problems blocking those folks. Clark Musman is in, that fourth tight end in the jumble. This is the ninth third down look that Western Michigan's had today. They've hit on five of them. Van Tubergen, keep the football. Outside the numbers, he's got a first down. Finally rolled down by Marlon Moore, that outstanding freshman cornerback, but Van Tubergen, not a runner of the football by any stretch, but picked it up here. Well, you know, the, he runs a 4-6, but that was a great fake by chance. I Honestly, I thought he had the football. So make Western Michigan now uh, six of nine on third down conversions today. Very, very strong in the first half. We're inside the six minute mark. Western Michigan trying to reclaim the lead. Broncos led it at 14 7 after they trailed 7 0. And Tubergen had that throw belted right back in his face. Now picking up the football and rolling uh, into the end zone for Northern Illinois, but Van Tubergen was throwing the football. Now, I thought that he got Should a be an incomplete pass. On the football. Let's take a look. Yeah, absolutely. A little premature celebration there by the Huskies. Well, I can understand Jamal Bass. He <laughs> sure. sees a football on the ground. The linebacker says, I'm going to pick it up. Yep. But oh, clearly Van Tubergen yep. threw the football. Yep. And it was batted down. So simply an uh, incomplete pass to bring up second down and 10 now as Alan Baxter was the man that got that again. First two series, Van Tubergen had time to throw the football. That's been the lacking here the last couple of series. 
On second and ten. Back to the ground game. Strong run from backup tailback Ryan Fields. Feels a little bit bigger now, Doug. He's a 200-pound fourth-year junior. As we said, he had the big day, close to 100 yards and a touchdown two weeks ago on what was a very tough Western Michigan loss at Ball State. They led by 10 mid-fourth. That was an excruciating loss in overtime and uh, you know, missed a field goal. Just had a lot of issues late in that game. One they certainly felt they should have won. This will be the 10th third down conversion opportunity. Not going to happen here as Van Tubergen tried to gun that slant. And now we've got a late flag that's going to cost Jamal Bass in Northern Illinois. They were going to get the football back, but Bass took out Josh Schaefer after the ball was uh, incomplete. Yeah, and absolutely a good call by the officials. I mean, the play was over. A poor decision by Bass. After the play, personal foul, number six defense, unnecessary roughness, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Partner, mark that one down. If Western Michigan goes on and puts points on the boards here, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And that just very, very foolish. I mean, they tried to fit the slant in there. The its receiver was really walking afterwards. Poor decision by Bass. Yeah, third-year sophomore and a good one. Oh, Real yeah. good oh, one yeah. out of Miramar, Florida is Jamal Bass. Well, he'll leave the football field for a play as Dave Doran has a little counsel with him. And it'll keep the Western Michigan drive alive in this 14-14 tie. Option game, Van Tubergen with that late pitch to Brian Fields. Only got a, uh, a couple as uh, in on the hit was Joe Windsor off that defensive end spot. Boy, I tell you, Coach uh, Cubit, uh, they're throwing the kitchen sink at Northern Illinois today. And here's here your comes, formation here's again. Here's the lonesome polecat again. Well, you like this? Three linemen on the center side of the football. Darian Chance will grab the bubble screen from Van Tubergen, but Northern Illinois, look at all over that. Seven white-shirted Huskies around the football and the takedown of Chance. Well, that, that's a good job by Jay Deeman and Ryan uh, Nielsen, the defense of the co-coordinators for Northern. They've chalked that up on the sideline, and now they've got that formation covered. Doug, this is the 11th third down opportunity in the first half. Amazing. 11th Amazing. for Western Michigan in the first 26 minutes of football. Van Tubergen will fire the strike. Second time they've hit that square in to Josh Schaefer on third and long. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the key on this play was great protection. Watch the receiver here on the end route right there. Ball right on the money. He had time to throw. And it was third and long. That's oh, a yeah. great job by the offensive line. Remember, that's the 11th third down opportunity that they have had. And as Schaefer worked in front of Demetrius Stone. On first to 10 for the 39, go back to the ground game. And again, not much there for uh, Brian Fields. Let's go back to that Van Tubergen strike to Schaefer on third and long. Boy, watch the protection here. That's just a terrific job by the right tackle. That was O'Neal. Nice. Good. He had a clean throw, clean throwing lane. Fields got just one. Second and nine now for Tyler Van Tubergen in Western Michigan. Audible. And this is Fields on the toss sweep. Tried to get a block, but they didn't fool Sean Progar, the highly decorated fifth year senior out of Glenville, Illinois. What a football player Sean Progar is. 19 and a half a career sacks for Progar. And, uh, you know, he's 6'2", two, about 258, and can really run. He's explosive. He's hard nosed. He is a good, good football player. Western Michigan has converted six of these uh, double digit third down looks they've had here. Inside the lane, a Darian Chance. He came outside that back door. 
first down Western Michigan at five foot six. You just can't find him. He got lost. You're exactly right, Mike. He got lost in there. Watch this. I, I thought they had him dead to right. Why? How does he get out of that? <laughs> Works through that little gap. He got 10 yards and outstanding work. Kudos to our camera crew. Guys, terrific job today. As you look at after that 10 yard run, Darian Chance, 50 totes for 66 yards. That tuber got it. Corner route. Broken up in oh, the end yeah. zone. Late flag. No Gonna be a pass interference call as Van Tubergen wanted Josh Schaefer. Was that Marlon Moore, the true freshman in coverage? Yes, it was. Yeah, take a look at it here. No question, because he, he actually the ball was underthrown a little bit because he, he was beat badly initially. And here's another shot. Yeah, the, uh, two flags come flying. Uh, that, that was uh, an easy call for the officials. Pass interference, defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. That, that's an example of the ball being just a little bit late thrown because initially he had him wide open. Here, here's Marlon Moore. Again, take a look at it. He was beat initially. Yeah, uh, that's a great call by the Never officials. got his head he's, around Doug. No, never. Never turned his head around to look for the fresh ball. That's yeah. a true freshman for you because he's going to be a heck of a corner. Yeah, Jimmy Ward, the free safety, was very instrumental in uh, getting Marlon Moore to the Northern Illinois program out of Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. Both out of Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. All right, a minute 44 now, and after that 15-yard penalty, marches the football down to the nine-yard line, out of the eye. As now Tyler Van Tubergen will uh, start to move his running backs, but Bill Cubitt wants a Western Michigan timeout. We'll take it with the veteran head coach of the Broncos. Good one going on in Waldo Stadium. We're tied at 14 each. My insurance rates are probably going to double. But, Dad, you've got... Allstate. With accident forgiveness, they guarantee your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Smart kid. Indeed. Are you in good hands? Okay, what do you have? I'll have the build your own burger with uh, sunny side up egg, mm -hmm. jack cheese, jill, and uh, make it a double. Inspiration can come from anywhere. Build your own burgers are now at Denny's. Wait for it. Wait for it. You know, I just don't think I should have to wait for it. What do you think I am? Quick and loans? At Quicken Loans, we won't make you wait for it. Our efficient online system allows us to get you through your home loan process fast, which means you'll never have to beg for a quick closing. One more way Quicken Loans is engineered to amaze. Bunkers, look at me when I'm talking to you. Are you Medicare eligible and concerned about protecting yourself from the cost that Medicare doesn't cover? If so, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois is your right choice. Call 1-877-613-1126 now for your free decision guide. It will answer all your questions and give you the information you need to make the right decision. You'll learn about Blue Medicare Advantage HMO, the plan that gives you premium coverage with no monthly premium. That's right, no additional monthly premium. Primary care visits are just $7, and you'll even receive prescription drug coverage. Why wait? It's easy to enroll in Blue Medicare Advantage. Every stage of life brings its challenges. Choosing the right health care coverage shouldn't be one of them. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Call 1-877-613-1126 now if you're Medicare eligible and want to choose Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. We'll rush you this free information packed decision guide. That's 1-877-613-1126. Call now. Mid-American Conference game, Northern Illinois, Western Michigan, brought to you by Honda Generators. Enter the Honda Generators tailgate giveaway for your chance to win a new Honda Generator. Also by Cleveland Clinic Sports Health, world-class care on game day and every day. Visit sports-health.org for details and by the Beef O'Brady's Bowl, December 21st in St. Petersburg, Florida. Look at that. Is there anything better than a college football Saturday in the Mid-American Conference? 
And sun shining, the foliage in full display with the colors. Kalamazoo, Michigan, tremendous setting in and around the campus here outside Waldo Stadium. Bill Cubitt got a timeout with his football team. 14 14 tie. Michael Regai, Doug Graber, all of our terrific crew with a buck 44 left. And Western Michigan knocking on the doorstep. Yeah, and no timeouts left, though. Van Tubergen came back underneath, and that throw was incomplete. Boy, he, uh, he wanted <laughs> Daniel Braverman on that, uh, that quick in route. Marlon Moore had a solid piece of uh, Braverman, it looked like to me. Uh, that looked like defensive holding. They were trying to run a pick route, honestly. That's exactly what they were trying to do. Van Tubergen missing there to bring up second and ten. Darian Chance in the one back. Musman in motion. Toss lead. This is Darian Chance. And the cutback. He's in the end zone. Light up the board for six. Western Michigan's Bronco. Boy, Musman, number 46, the tight end slash fullback. Boy, did he make a great block at the edge. Watch number 46 right here. Watch that block. That's certainly what sprung him, and I'll tell you, that was also a great job by Willie Beavers, the left tackle. Number 70. Watch this block. Ooh, ooh. That's the first uh, touchdown we put on the board today via the run game for either football team. Boy, and that's Victor and Jacques coming off the field, the middle backer for Northern Illinois. That would be a devastating blow uh, to their defense. He's the guy that makes all the checks and everything else, and plus is a heck of a middle backer. Third touchdown one of the year for the diminutive, <laughs> sizzling Darian Chance. Andrew Haldeman to add the PAT out of the hold of uh, Zach Wynn. Haldeman will put that point after touchdown on the board in Western Michigan. Football team that averages 28 points per game got Darian Chance in the end zone, and they've taken a 21 14 lead on Northern Illinois. Well, my biggest concern here now, if I'm Coach Cubitt, is uh, my kickoff team has had a few issues today, and it starts with the kicker. The kicks have been down to the 20 yard line, 15 yard line, and uh, frankly, uh, they got to get a better kick and they got to get better coverage because. Northern has two timeouts left in a minute and 32 seconds and this is an offense that can be a fast strike offense and you got to be very wary of putting the football in the hands of Tommy Lee Lewis absolutely. as well because number 10 in white has been absolutely scalding today in the return game coming up at halftime we'll uh, take you to our Mid-American Conference studios and uh, give you an idea of all things going on in the Mid-American Conference today. And I'll check with former Western Michigan quarterback, real good one, Tim Hiller. That's uh, coming up in the next couple of moments. Now, keeping that, uh, that football on the ground is this Western Michigan kick game. And on that return for Northern Illinois is Angelo Sebastiano, the wide receiver. Sebastiano with a solid return. I want to remind you, we recognize our friends at Allstate for their charitable contributions across the country since 2005. Allstate has donated more than 2.8 million to the Good Hands Field Goal Net program to benefit the University General Scholarship Fund. Boy, pretty good field position here, 40 yard line, plenty of time, really. Minute 24 left in uh, this first half. Jordan Lynch coming to work. He'll throw that bubble screen, and he is right on time as uh, making the grab uh, on the bubble screen is Marlon Moore. First down and a lot more for Marlon Moore. Western Michigan's defense trying to get Jordan Lynch contained here as we come near the minute mark. Now runs that inside the late draw to Akeem Daniels, and he got rocked. Daniels got taken down by Freddie Bishop, a terrific defensive end out of Inkster, Michigan. Well, what a key play right here. Watch Bishop, watch the penetration right there in a great open field tackle. At loss of about three, but more importantly, 
force Northern to take a timeout. And so David Dorn is uh, going to use that timeout. Offensive coordinator Rod Carey of this highly productive, very uh, high octane Northern Illinois offense is uh, Freddie Bishop. We mentioned uh, Bishop, very, very tremendous defensive end, second team All Mac performer a year ago. Yeah, and you know, I think the Western Michigan defense has been spectacular this first half because you and I know how good yeah. that Northern Illinois offense is. You know, Bill Cuba just told him you got 62 more seconds. You've, you've got to defend, though. Yep. And the football at the 44 yard line. Jordan Lynch on that waggle left being chased. And Lynch will get pumped out of bounds. <laughs> You're a defensive back. You think at any time Lynch may want to lower the boom on you. You, know, uh, you can just see the bind ticket there. Lynch says, okay, right. now, am I going to run him over or am I going to step out of well, bounds? That was Rontavious Atkins. There's <laughs> Atkins who wears number 18, the youngster. The sophomore out of Pahokee, Florida. It's going to bring up a third down and uh, let's call it 13 for Jordan Lynch. Straight quarterback draw. A lot of Western Michigan uh, hats to get Lynch on the ground at the 38 yard line. It'll bring up fourth down and eight as that clock ticks now inside 40 seconds left in the opening half. Well, it looks like the punt team now coming on the field goal for Sims his long of the year is 44 definitely out of his range and got some I think a little bit of wind in his face too so that uh, gonna break now they've had three successful fakes this year with their special teams has Northern Illinois so you better be alert here if you're Western Michigan and they are they don't have anybody back well, Western Michigan if you're wondering they do not have a timeout left. No they have not. Why they're letting uh, Western you say well aren't you stop that clock get the football back can't they've used all three of them here Northern Illinois will take the timeout. Now. You know if I'm Northern Illinois I, I'm going to get into a Hail Mary formation and take a shot. I mean you're at the 38 yard line. 38 yard line be a 55 yard field goal attempt for Matthew Sims. Yeah. Well what's at stake for the Huskies of Northern Illinois as we told you they are right with Alabama and Oregon as the three football teams around the FBS who won 16 of their last 17 the Huskies only lost that one pointer yep. in Soldier Field to the Iowa Hawkeyes they've won seven in a row overall and they they haven't lost in the last dozen in Mac play that's home road everywhere they haven't been beaten in the Mac and it's going back to early last season. Well, now they've changed, and they're going to let uh, Matthew Sims uh, take a shot at it. And again, be alert for the fake. His long on the year is 44 yards from Sims. This will be 55 yards from the left hash. He got a lot of leg, did Matthew Sims, and he, he hit it. He hit it from 54 yards out. The longest of his career had about a yard or two to spare uh, over that crossbar. Well, you're you're right. That was about a yard over. Doesn't matter. It's in. He put three on the board. Dead center for Matthew Sims from 54 yards out. A career high. 30 minutes of football in how in the books. In Kalamazoo, Michigan, Western Michigan with a 21-17 lead on the Huskies of Northern Illinois. A lot of halftime coming up. Don't go away. The Capital One Cash Rewards Card gives you a 50% annual bonus. And everyone likes 50% more. Rubles. 50% <laughs> more simoleons. 50% more saw bucks. 50% more clams. It's a lobster. Either way. The Capital One Cash Rewards Card. With a 50% annual cash bonus, it's the card for people who like more cash. 50% more dough. What's in your wallet? They come from all over. From north and south. From the Midwest and the Far East. They come to study. To learn the ropes. To graduate with honors with tools that will serve them in life. Because it was here that we learned what was, what is, and what could be. Western Michigan University. Grab the reins. 
When do you take five-hour energy? When I'm on the night shift. When they have more energy than I do. When I don't feel like working out. When there isn't enough for me to go around. When I have school. And work. Every morning. It's faster and easier than coffee. Every afternoon. When that 2.30 feeling hits. Every day. Every day. Every day is a five-hour energy day. Five-hour energy. Every day. on your mobile. More ways to search, more ways to find. Only from AT&T. Where should you get advice about getting out of debt? Geraci Law is one of the oldest and largest debt relief law firms in the country. I'm attorney Peter Francis Geraci. Whether you're high income or low, rent or own, if you need advice about mortgages, bill collectors, foreclosure, finance companies, or almost any debt problem, call Geraci Law or click now. If you're worried about debt, call now to see if you qualify. 1-800-401-4010. With no insurance, we needed cash. I needed cash now. So we took our car title to Title Max. So I took my car title to Title Max. Title Max turned my car title into cash. With Title Max, we won't have to sell our car. My car title was my credit, so approval was easy. We had our cash in under 30 minutes. Next time you need cash, take your car title to Title Max. And you too will say, I, I got, got my, my title, title back, back with, with Title, title Max. Max. Get your title back with Title Max. We're fighting for voices that need to be heard. For cleaner air and your right to breathe it. For those who want to quit smoking. And for those who need them to. We're fighting for clear skies over every city. And healthy lungs throughout the country. The American Lung Association isn't just fighting for air. We're fighting for all the things that make it worth breathing. Join us in the fight at fightingforair.org. And welcome into halftime. I am Matt Chick along with Charles Arbuckle and Jason Seahorn. Some good action going on later on today. The Ohio Bobcats taking on Miami of Ohio, the Battle of the Bricks. And Jason, uh, Frank Solich has Ohio playing really well in the BCS standings for the first time in school history. Have you worked on uh, trademarking that uh, phrase yet? No. Uh, <laughs> I, just I, I think it's already been used. Um, I think this all began with that win against Penn State. When you think about their season, getting off to that start, beating Penn State in in Penn State really set them apart. It just gave this team a lot of confidence. You look at the way they've won games. They've won them by, by a lot of points in the last three weeks, 7-3-7. Seven, and seven. So they've learned how to play the close games against Miami of, Miami of Ohio, who cannot run the football, 119 out of 120 teams. They're going to have to play great pass defense because Miami of Ohio's only shot against Ohio is to throw the football over the place. So look for this football game to get a, I, I would say that Ohio definitely has the you know, advantage here, the way they score. But... When you have a team that doesn't care and just can throw the ball on the football field, it makes for a long day for your defense. Miami of Ohio, restless for a win here. Back-to-back -back losses to Cincinnati and Bowling Green. Another big game, Kent State at Rutgers. The surging Scarlet Knights, Charles, a uh, top 15 team in the BCS standings. What's going to be the key for Kent State uh, to get this win, pull the upset? Well, you know, when you think of Rutgers head coach Kyle Flood, he says, hey, we have to not be a South Florida and a UConn. And what you want to take away, their defense is played nasty only allowing 69 yards rushing per game and that is tied for second with Florida State the other thing is they've only allowed two rushing touchdowns all year Kent State's uh, biggest issue or biggest thing that they can do they can run the football Dree Archer uh, 15 touchdowns combined with Travion Durham they're 27th in the nation in rushing, 100 and, uh, 1,336 yards combined between these two guys that's their strength but the problem is Rutgers just takes it away from you. They don't allow you to run the football like you want to. So if you can't throw it, 
and you can't run it, you're going to have a <laughs> long game against Rutgers. And Rutgers does run the ball well with Juwan Jameson. Yeah, he's played well. 779 yards, three touchdowns this year. He really has helped this offense. And I think when you think back to Rutgers being well, they said this kid is like Ray Rice. Oh, I better not say that. But he is pretty good. <laughs> Kent State looking for their first six-game win streak since 1940. They can do it with a win over Rutgers today. This new phone is amazing. I'm watching Natalie's ballet recital, and I'm pulling photos right from the video. Great idea. We can pick one and frame it. Okay. Here, watch this. She nails almost every move. Her old camera could never do this. She's so good at ballet. Well, I think she's the best in the class. Where is she, by the way? In timeout. Oh. In that one? Ooh. Take a photo straight from video and never miss a moment. The HTC One X from AT&T. Now $99.99. AT&T. Rethink possible. Hey, hey, looking to trade the old girl in? What? It's a brand new Camry. I just bought this. Really? I just thought I'd take a look at the 2013 Malibu Eco. Sure you can. Uh, this Malibu's a great value with all new styling, and it's an IIHS 2012 top safety pick. This cannot be a brand new car. What are you doing? I was looking for a cassette deck. Visit your local Chevy dealer today. Now get a 2013 Malibu LS for around $199 per month. one on the scene. A dead ranger in a crash plane doesn't feel like a coincidence to me. We have a debris field that's much larger than it should be. Larger because the plane was heavier than the manifest indicated. What's so valuable that someone's willing to crash a plane and kill six people in order to get it? Wednesday at 7 on My 50 Chicago. I miss organic chemistry class. Yeah, and I miss normal people. Can we go on? really need to learn how to speak to human beings. I speak six languages, two of which you've never even heard of. Get a soul. Get a brain. Bones. Boo. What? Solving murders. This is blood. One argument at a time. Is it always like this when you two are together? No. It's kind of hot. Bones Weekends. Viewer discretion advised. Tonight at 5 and 6 on My 50 Chicago. It's like our own little... my favorite kind of capade. <laughs> Get out. I am not getting... Marriage isn't always like rainbows and sunshine. Everybody loves Raymond five days a week. I can't believe I let you make love to me all week. A full hour, weeknights at 10 on My 50 Chicago. On How I Met Your Mother, Barney and his friends have a way with words. Suit up. Legendary. Awesome. They speak their own language. Talk them out. Slap them. Spell out loud. Phone five. You didn't phone five, did you? I know when you don't phone five ten. And Barney always gets the last word. Inventing your own word shows creativity and vision. Visitivity on How I Met Your Mother. A full hour, weeknights at 9 on My 50 Chicago. Weeknights at 6 on My 50 Chicago. It's dividing. Oh, yeah. It's doubling. Say what? It's cloning. Excellent. Hey, come on, just tell everybody there's twice as much Big Bang Theory. Excuse me. Spoiler alert. Two episodes back to back. One full hour of Big Bang. Wow, that is awesome. This is like the coolest thing ever. Yeah! The Big Bang Theory. A full hour back to back. Weeknights at 6 on My 50 Chicago. Outstanding first half of football here at Waldo Stadium, Western Michigan, trying to end the 12-game Mac win streak of Northern Illinois. On top by four, the Broncos, 21-17 at the break. Uh, great to have all of you with us, and I'm delighted to be joined by one of the uh, most outstanding quarterbacks in the history of Western Michigan University. Young man from uh, Orville, Ohio, uh, Tim Hiller, career leader in touchdown passes, career total offense leader. How's it feel to be back uh, here in Waldo Stadium and seeing the same type of offensive numbers you put up for Bill Cubitt? Well, it's, it's it's fun to see. I mean, it's, it's always great to be back. It's always great to see a lot of guys. I feel like a little bit of a stranger. A lot of guys I've played with have, have kind of moved through, and a lot of coaches have moved on. Um, but it's good to be back and see a couple of guys who were freshmen, sophomores, now fifth-year seniors and really excelling. 
Tim's final year was 2009, and of course, you were talking a moment ago and mentioning, I'd like you to share, Bill Cubitt's offense, very innovative. Uh, how do you feel you grew as a quarterback because of the uh, innovation of right. Bill Cubitt offensively? You know, I think one thing, you, you see a lot of quarterbacks in the college game today looking to the sideline and getting their checks from the sideline, and he, we'd never do that, and, and he still doesn't do that, and he prides himself in that, and so I think the way I grew the most was that all that responsibility was dumped on me right away, and I had to learn and grow and develop, and, uh, and, and I had to. I had no choice but to learn and be a student of the game, and you, it's fun to see these guys develop and do that as they progress as well. Guys like Tyler, Alex Carter, they've had a great career, both of them. And Tim Hiller had a chance to go into an NFL meeting room for a year with none other than the Indianapolis Colts so I know you held your own with Peyton Manning in those meeting rooms. Well you know it was kind of one of those situations that you had to kind of earn that respect and, and, and learn and prove that you could you know know the answer when he called on you and things like that and uh, learned a great deal from him in a short amount of time and, and he's just uh, so impressive uh, what he knows and, and the way he works too I mean he's a, a veteran that works like a rookie and it's, it's just a very impressive thing. So. Tim Hiller taking that offensive expertise now to the coaching sidelines give us an idea what you're doing as a head football coach in the high school level. Yeah, we're, you know, we're trying to build a program. We're over at Gull Lake High School, about 20 minutes east of here. Uh, got got Mitch Zajac and Scott Gaius and Ben Armour and, and several names Bronco fans who recognize that are over on our staff. And it's just a fun young group to coach with, trying to build a tradition at a, at a high school that, uh, you know, is about 950 kids. It's a great community, very supportive, and, and we're having fun together. It's a lot, of, a lot of fun. Big blast. Tim Hiller, it was great to see you perform here at Western Michigan. Truly one of the, uh, the outstanding quarterbacks the MAC had. Good luck with the coaching side. And thanks for stopping by. Thank you. I appreciate it. Great to see you. All right. Orville, Ohio Zone, uh, a Buckeye from the state of Ohio. Make it good here in the Wolverine state of Michigan. Tim Hiller, former Western Michigan quarterback. More coming up in a moment. I'm your son. And as you well know, I can barely focus on one thing at a time. So between mowing the lawn and football, I choose football. Sorry, Robert. $5 doesn't buy my undivided attention. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you might end up with a financial buzz cut. So get all state. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem. Like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an all state agent. Are you in good hands? Kevin, are you sure this is okay? We're cool. I know a guy. Hey, y'all. Run. Go. I was just going to ask them what they were biting on. Check out all the great deals at Bass Pro Shops, like savings of $50 on lacrosse Alpha Burley waterproof boots. And bring the kids for free games, activities, and a free photo in the pumpkin patch. Your adventure starts here. Are you sure this is okay? Don't worry. I know a guy. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, this may be the most important phone call you'll ever make. I owed $50,000 in taxes. But listen. Your tax problem is settled. You only owe $8,400. What a great message. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, then you owe it to yourself to call this number. Let our experts help guide you through the process of negotiating a tax settlement. Call this number or go to tax10,000.com. I feel like everybody here is here for the students. This was just so welcoming and so comforting that I felt like this was where I was supposed to be. Rather than trying to be an instructor, I try to be a guide to help them improve their understanding of what they're learning. You can find everyone here at NIU, and it's a great model of what the real world is. The student, the learner, is the center of our universe. Make tomorrow awesome with Xfinity TV from Comcast. Right now, you can get Xfinity TV for just $14.99 a month for six months with HD DVR service free for three months. Call 1-877-342-0115 today. Get the top networks and popular channels like AMC and Discovery in digital quality. Plus, never miss a thing with HD DVR service. Record your favorite shows and watch them on your schedule in stunning HD. Call 1-877-342-0115 and get Xfinity TV for just $14.99 a month for six months. Don't forget to ask how you can get Xfinity On Demand with the best in entertainment anytime on any device. Plus, premium channels like HBO and Showtime. Get Xfinity TV for just $14.99 a month for six months with HD DVR service free for three months. Tomorrow could be awesome if you call today. Call 1-877-342-0115 and make the switch now. Xfinity, the future of awesome. 
Weeknights at 6 on My 50 Chicago. It's dividing. Oh, yeah. It's doubling. Say what? It's cloning. Excellent. Hey, come on. Just tell everybody there's twice as much Big Bang Theory. Excuse me. Spoiler alert. Two episodes back to back. One full hour of Big Bang. Wow, that is awesome. This is like the coolest thing ever. Yeah! The Big Bang Theory. A full hour back to back. Weeknights at 6 on My 50 Chicago. 21-17, Western Michigan uh, trying to end the 12-game Mac win streak of the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Good one through the first 30 minutes of football. Know you've enjoyed it. Great to have you with us, Michael Regai, my partner, Doug Graber. We've had four TD passes in the first half, two by each quarterbacks. And yet, Doug, when you think about it now, defensively, in a 21-17 football game, defensively, we've seen moments of excellent defense by both football teams. I, I think the Western def Western Michigan defense has been close to spectacular at times here in the first half because you and I both know how potent that Northern Illinois offense is. Led by Jordan Lynch and the second leading rusher in all the FBS. Take a look at our first half highlights brought to you by YP.com. And it starts with Tyler Van Tubergen. Oh, the junior's been exceptional throwing the football for Bill Cuban. Threw the in routes very, very well here early in the first quarter. The key there is look at the protection. Here you see Monette going up and getting it with a good throw again. Solid protection. There's the, uh, sit, sitting down in the end zone. And defensively, of course, uh, boy, the, the pressure really came from Northern in the second quarter. Uh, Van Tubergen really didn't have a shot. The Northern defense was all over the field. Great pursuit. Here's a great, great play by Sellis Carr, the corner for Western Michigan. So they had their opportunities as well. All right. Uh, the Bronco always prominent around uh, Western Michigan University. Did they beat Northern Illinois? Come on back and find out. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, members of Congress, in celebration of over 75 years of our Government Employees Insurance Company, or GEICO, as most of you know it, I propose savings for everyone. I'm talking hundreds here, and furthermore... Breaking news, the gecko is demanding free pudding. And political parties that are actual parties, with cake and, and presents. No, oh, that was good. It's too bad nobody could hear me. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We have the teams representing the two conferences that dominate Midwest college football. We have the united backing of one of the world's top chains in the fast food industry. We have a national television audience on the premier sports network. We have one of the newest, best football stadiums in America. Football, pizza, in Detroit, during the holidays, join the party. We admit it, we can't help ourselves. Just when we built the Optima, a great mid-size sedan, we felt the need to add things like 18-inch chrome wheels, LED lights, a sport tuned suspension, premium Napa leather trim seats, and an electronic parking brake. The Optima was already the best. Now it's even better. Introducing the Kia Optima Limited. Up next for career day, quarterback Aaron Rodgers. That State Farm agent said she helps people. What do you do? I play football. That's not a job. Uh, well. Did you save my dad hundreds with the discount double check? No, but I was MVP last year. Mr. Hubble says trophies are for people with self-esteem issues. Who's Mr. Hubble? That's Rod Hubble. No, it is not. For savings, we're best in class. Hey, Roger! Discount double check! Get to a better state. State Farm. New Pink Lemonade 5-Hour Energy? 5-Hour Energy supports the Avon Foundation for Women Breast Cancer Crusade. So I can get the energized feeling I need and support a great cause? I'm sold. 
Pink Lemonade Five Hour Energy. Yeah, and a portion of every sale goes to the Avon Foundation for Women Breast Cancer Crusade. I'm sold. New Pink Lemonade Five Hour Energy. Get the alert, energized feeling you need and support breast cancer research and access to care. Second 30 minutes of football, uh, sure to excite. Back here at Waldo Stadium, let's quickly take a look at our uh, Max scoreboard brought to you by our friends at Marathon. Pete Lembo and the Ball State Cardinals with 17-10 halftime lead at uh, West Point in New York State over uh, Army. Everything else later on, keep an eye on Ohio and Miami. The 24th ranked Bobcats and Frank Solich in their Battle of the Bricks rivalry game in Oxford today. Toledo tried to stay perfect. They go see Jeff Quinn and they get Brandon Oliver back. They're running back today, by the way. So those are the two. And of course, Kent State playing uh, 18th ranked Rutgers. That starts at 3.30. That's our max scoreboard brought to you by Marathon. All right, let's go. Second half of football in this 21-17 Western Michigan lead. Michael Regai, Doug Graber. Western Michigan tries to end the 12-game Mac win streak on the Huskies of Northern Illinois. This is Brian Fields, and he got rattled as uh, he hit the 22-yard line. So Fields on the return. And the special team coverage of uh, the Huskies of Northern Illinois, very, very solid, is on uh, the hit was Jamison Wells, the junior wide receiver. All right, Doug Graber, you were mentioning the numbers of uh, Tyler Van Tubergen, the, the redshirt junior quarterback who's been playing for the last five football games now after the, uh, the senior starter, Alex Carter, was injured. 15 of 25 in the first half for Tubergen. Now Darian Chance will get the call. Run game starts out the first place selection of the third quarter. Let's look at the quarterbacking comparison today. Jordan Lynch of Northern Illinois, Tyler Van Tubergen of Western Michigan. Well, obviously the rushing yards are always going to be in favor of Lynch. Uh, passing yards, uh, Van Tubergen had the nod there. Darian Chance, who just picked up uh, three yards with his first carry of the third quarter, had uh, an... Day, Jordan Lynch of Northern Illinois, Tyler Van Tubergen of Western Michigan. Well, obviously the rushing yards are always going to be in favor of Lynch. Uh, passing yards, uh, Van Tubergen had the nod there. Darian Chance, who just picked up uh, three yards with his first carry of the third quarter, had uh, an excellent 74-yard first half with a touchdown for Western Michigan. Second and seven. Van Tubergen being pressured and had to get the football away as uh, in his face and putting on uh, the pressure was Tyrone Clark, that uh, very speedy linebacker for Northern Illinois. Uh, to me, uh, that's really the key to the second half for Western Michigan. Can they protect Tyler Van Tubergen uh, uh, you know, against this just fierce, ferocious pass rush? of uh, Northern Illinois. Third down at seven. Tyler Van uh, Tubergen. Now that pocket's going to collapse. Van Tubergen going to keep the play alive and outside the, uh, the tackle box threw the football away. A check mark there goes to the defense of Northern Illinois on that first Western Michigan series. Yeah, first series, I mean, boy, they were, they brought it and they had all kinds of pressure on Van Tubergen, but to his credit, two throwaways, I'm fine with the throwaway. Uh, you know, his biggest issue has been interceptions. 
All right, here's uh, Jay Schroeder now to punt it away. He's had a, a couple of punts today. He's averaged 39 yards. This one comes up short, and in the hands of Tommy Lee Lewis. Lewis outside the numbers with speed before Schroeder himself takes him down at the 23-yard line. Tommy Lee Lewis, he's called a touchdown pass. He's had a 44-yard kickoff return, a 44-yard punt return, and now we add that second punt return to it for Tommy Lee Lewis. That's two line drives that Schroeder has hit uh, to, to uh, Tommy, and you, know, you just can't cover that. You can't do it. A terrible punt. All right, you see the uh, the 50 total plays run by Western Michigan in the first half and the uh, seven minute time of possession advantage. They love that. As offensively, they were very, very good. Jordan Lynch being chased came underneath and that throw was incomplete. It came up short of uh, Deron Brown as uh, Lynch started what looked like quarterback power and then backed out of there to throw the football. Yeah, and credit the Western secondary uh, not to be fooled. Uh, Rich Nagy, the defensive coordinator, a lot of man to man coverage uh, in this football game against Northern, and they've been effective with it. But a very short field, though, that Northern Illinois is playing on after the Lewis Putt return. Lynch on the roll. He wanted to round Brown again on the corner route. Brown was being covered, though, by one of the top corners in the business, Lewis Toller. He earned freshman All-American honors. Yep. And our good buddy Phil Steele, of course, who puts out the uh, fabulous college football publication. Phil Steele named Lewis Toller a first-team Mac choice a couple of seasons ago as well. This will be third and ten now for Lynch. Firing that in route, and it is caught. Very close to the first down, Martell Moore. You know, the thing about Moore, Doug, he loves coming across the middle in traffic. No fear for that no, young man. No, not at all. Tough, hard, no senior receiver. And they're covered pretty well by Taylor. On fourth down, no. Jordan Lynch and Northern Illinois went right to the line of scrimmage. And I don't know if Lynch picked that up or not. They're going to have to measure this, but at first blush, he did not. All right, let's take a look. Here's they got to the line of scrimmage quickly while we were looking at the Martell Moore catch yep. on replay. And that was stopped as the Western Michigan defense doing the job yet once again. Dave Doran not pleased. Western Michigan with a football and a four-point lead when we get back. Hey, hey. I approve this message. Western Michigan defense a moment ago came up large as Kyle Lark, the uh, defensive end, made the stop on Jordan Lynch to deny them of uh, keeping the football on that fourth and one. So bring back Tyler Van Tubergen now and the Western Michigan offense. Van Tubergen has uh, led uh, three long touchdown drives today, although first series of this third quarter a moment ago uh, give the win to the Northern Illinois defense as Tubergen couldn't find anything he liked. Yep, and again, pressure. That was really the key. Over the 13 yard line, this Western Michigan series will start, and Darian Chance on that first down carry. You can hear those pads pop. I mean, we're, we are situated near the top of Waldo Stadium and dugout. You can hear pads and the plastic popping all the way up here. Oh, boy, the collisions have been absolutely fierce. Give Darian Chance just two on that first down carry. So Chance was at a, a big day at the tail running back spot for Western Michigan today. It's Van Tuber going to go with three wide and Chance offset. Northern Illinois was Sean Progar. Doug, he looked like he was fired out of uh, an erector set to get to Van Tuberkin. And uh, going against the freshman Willie Beavers, uh, he just couldn't handle him. He just flat got beat with the speed rush, and Progar was shot out of a cannon on that pass rush. A fifth-year senior out of uh, Glenville, Illinois. All of you uh, in the state of Illinois. Very aware of the highly decorated prep career of Sean Progar. 
Set up that screen now. This is Darian Chance. He's got to look at the first down sticks, but it closed quickly as he was taken down at the 19 yard line. And that is now two consecutive three and outs for Western Michigan here to start the third. Yeah, and I like the call here a screen to try to slow down that rush. But uh, just uh, too too much, too far, too far to go to get the first down. And I'll tell you, they better come up with a way to help Willie Beavers at that left offensive tackle. They better start chipping Progar or something to help him. And let's see if Jake Schroeder can get a better punt off than he has the last couple. Yep. He's trying to keep this away from Tommy Lee Lewis. And he'll angle it out of bounds. Lewis, Tommy Lee Lewis, has caught the touchdown pass today. And return three punts for 75 yards with a long of 44. There's Lewis. He's averaged 25 yards per on the punt return. Egg. All kinds of fun here at Waldo Stadium today. Let's take a look at some potential finalists for our Capital One Cup impact performance of the week. How about our man Monte Ball with the uh, Wisconsin Badgers? 74th career touchdown. Travis Prentice, though. Remember Travis Prentice? Oh, yeah. The Miami Red Hawk program. Played for uh, the late Randy Walker. That Miami program. Log on to CapitalOneCup.com to vote for this week's impact performance. All right, Northern Illinois on a short field again. And this is tailback, uh, their youngster, their true freshman. That is uh, Keith Harris, Jr. Harris, 180-pounder. They really like him. And again, remember, no latent settle today for Northern Illinois. Lose their starting tail and their leading rush. Banged up at practice this week. The punting game has been crucial for Western Michigan today. They have really struggled. Lynch on second and four. He'll play pitch and catch with Martell Moore. Look at the moves from Moore. That's a first down to the 20-yard line. That's 13 yards on the hookup for Jordan Lynch and Martell Moore. Well, an excellent throw. And, of course, Martell Moore's space is tough one-on-one -on -one. there. He got the better of Johnny Simon. This is the second time here early third quarter that Western Michigan has allowed Northern Illinois to start a drive on a short field. Yep. 23-yard line, now 37-yard line. Keith Harris put the football down on that lead draw, but then got it back as he pounced on it, so the freshman did not get it secure. Yeah, very fortunate here. The ball bounced right back to him on the ground. Very fortunate was Keith Harris. Jordan Lynch will get him lined up quickly. And the Harris fumble creates second and ten. Akeem Daniels now offset with Jordan Lynch, who wants to go up top. Now Lynch sees a lot of green in front of him. Lynch inside the, the five and got roll blocked as he got put to a hold at the one-yard line. That's 19 yards and a first down. Jordan Lynch leading rusher in all of college football. I say a slide is not in his vocabulary at all. I mean, he runs north and south. First a goal now from the two. Jordan Lynch for the Northern Illinois lead. He's got the corner. Touchdown Lynch and the Huskies. The poor field position was going to get him, and it was just a matter of time. They're just too good offensively. Watch him set this up inside, makes the inside move, has the speed to get it to the corner. Doug, he got an excellent seal block from Luke Ekis, yep. the backup tight end yep, out of the sure end. Yep, he did, absolutely. Well, Northern Illinois responding here in the third quarter. Matthew Sims to add... Point number 24 on the PAT. Sims will do that. And 10 unanswered for the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Look at Luke Ekis, number 83, with that excellent block. Let's to the end zone, Northern Illinois, to the lead. Hi there. Welcome to Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where fresh open. The weekends this fall, tonight at 7 on My 50 Chicago. 
Today's Mid-American Conference game, Northern Illinois, Western Michigan, being brought to you by Quicken Loans, engineered to amaze. Also by Marathon, proud title sponsor of the Marathon Mac Football Championship game. By Five Hour Energy, tackle the tire, take Five Hour Energy. And by Chevrolet, from kickoff to the very last yard, Chevy runs deep. We expected to have uh, one that would uh, keep you entertained and uh, absolutely exciting all day long here at Waldo Stadium in Kalamazoo. And when you have tremendous performers like Jordan Lentz, this young man wears number six, quarterback for Northern Illinois on hand, you're going to get that. 24-21, so 10 unanswered for Northern Illinois, going back to Matthew Sims' school record 54-yard field goal that ended the first half. Yeah, and their first two possessions, I mean, that 23 three yard line and 30 yard line. I mean, you know, uh, inside the Western Territory. Wow, uh, they're just too good to give them that kind of field position. Darren Duncan, who wears number one, and Brian Fields, opposite him, wears number 20. They are the two set to, uh, one of them, anyway, to receive this Matthew Sims boot. This is Darren Duncan from the 16 with room. Pretty nice return for Duncan. Let's call it a 16-yard return to the 32-yard line. And uh, for the uh, the junior college transfer. And now, Doug, this is position number three of the third quarter for Tyler Van Tubergen in Western Michigan. A pair of three and outs on the first two series. Yeah, and again, that Western front was just all over Van Tubergen. I mean, he, he had no shot to throw the football, and they really took advantage of freshman left tackle Willie Beavers. Nice day for Van Tubergen, 16 to 28. He'll deliver here. Nice that out route, though, is incomplete. The coverage from that terrific free safety Jimmy Ward on Josh Schaefer. Now, let's mention the, the big number 70, Willie Beavers, redshirt freshman, his first career start today. He's the left tackle. Terry Davison, who had his 24 starts, the fourth-year junior, out today not playing, yep. and Beavers has had to step in. <laughs> Against Windsor, Progar, and Baxter. <laughs> Tough duty. Not an easy assignment. Set up screen right. This is Darian Chance. Well, he tried to put a move on, but uh, could not. As Chance got wrapped up by Jamal Bass, the hard-hitting third-year sophomore. There's Bass. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Bass and, and Ty Tyrone Clark were both all over that one. Just got a quick look there at Willie Beavers a moment ago. Yep. There, there's Willie. And again, Terry Davis made 24 straight starts, 300-pound fourth-year junior, not going today. And so Beavers has had to step in. Very nice first half. The third and six. And Tuber gonna fight. It is caught. It is caught by Clark Musman. Musman's made two big third down catches today as uh, Musman made the grab to move the chain. Nice coaching adjustment. They put a tight end to Willie Beaver's side to, to widen the edge a little bit, and that really helped him in his pass protection. Went to work on Dominique Ware of Northern Illinois. Yep. So the first first down conversion of this third quarter that is now inside the eight minute mark for Western Michigan. Back to the ground game. A misdirection for Darian Chance. Chance has been over uh, 100 yards on the ground uh, three times this year against Minnesota against Toledo all of and Ball State unfortunately for Western Michigan all three of those in losses. Yeah. You know in the first half that same play was getting four and five yards and now this northern Illinois defense is really hunkered down here now in the third quarter. Western Michigan's going to go empty five wide on second and nine. And Tubergen look out got to step up. Progar set time of Tyler Van Tubergen as Progar uh, made the uh, the hit from behind on the Western Michigan QB. Nice job uh, by the left tackle, but again, the ball's got to come out because you're just not going to be able to hold off this rush. 
That was Progar's 22nd career sack. One of the best in the game, Sean Progar. 9 of 15 now on third down conversions. It's a long one. Third down and a long 11. And we've got movement on that right side with the two veterans. Five yard penalty. Third down. John Deo, who uh, did yep. his undergrad and played football at Michigan State before coming here to Kalamazoo, got whistled. And uh, that's what great pass rushers do. I mean, they put so much stress on that offensive line that you're just trying to get out of there as quick as you can. It, it's a matter of survival. Ten unanswered points for Northern Illinois. They trailed at 21-14. They put ten straight on the board to reclaim the lead. Third and long, Van Tubergen will fire to Eric Monet. He's very close as Monet. They're picking up that first down. Boy, great protection that time. Take a look at the route here. Nice job on it. Just sets it down right there against the zone and a great throw and great protection. Nice day for the fifth year senior, Eric Monette. He's caught a pair of touchdown passes and now converts that big third down on third and 16. Yeah, that, that was clutch. As Tim Hiller talked about the quarterback is making all the audibles. I go back to the ground game. The call to Gary and Chance, not much there. Let's call it second and nine. As again, you know, he called the names almost on every run game. Allen Baxter, Ken Bishop, Nabal Jefferson, and Sean Progar. Now, now, now here, Progar and uh, Bishop are coming off the football field. Yeah, they just changed the whole front four. They just brought a brand new front four in, and that, that is such a luxury. Now you got Windsor in there at the left end. Boy, he can bring it too. Second and nine. Van Tuber gonna oh. quick slam. He got picked off. It is intercepted by Jamal Bass. Bass for Northern Illinois. Finally pounded to the ground inside the 20 yard line. The big contingent of Husky fans here at Waldo Stadium love that. A stop and a big one for Jamal Bass and Northern Illinois. Well, they threw the slant against tough coverage. Take a look at it right here. Corners in great shape. Ball pops up in the air. There's Bass. That was a bit Marlon Moore, the freshman corner on the coverage. A 44-yard interception return for Jamal Bass. Now Jordan Lynch on the carry. Lynch inside the 10. Still alive. Jordan Lynch. With his toughness personified, touchdown Lynch and Northern Illinois. Well, we're going to talk about it later here, but that young man should be at least in the conversation for the Heisman Trophy, in my opinion. Look at this, brother. You talk about tough heart goes. Wow. Just keeps bringing it. Linebacker mentality playing quarterback. He got hit uh, at three different um, intervals on his way to the 20-yard touchdown joint. Matthew Sims to add the PAT. And now 17 on answer points going back to the Matthew Sims field goal to end the first half as the lead has ballooned to 10. Well, here's, in, in our opinion, <laughs> Here's the Heisman credentials for Jordan Lynch. Just take a look at the rushing yards per game, rushing TDs, 344.9 per game average. Uh, absolutely, he is 75% of their offense right there is number six. Amazing. And again, uh, it bears repeating. This Northern Illinois program has been blessed over the last four years with one of the finest most superb quarterbacks that has graced the Mid-American Conference in Chandler Harness, now with the Indianapolis Colts. But Jordan Lynch, in his first year as a starter, has absolutely replaced Harness, who he gives a lot of credit to for his development as a youngster in right. the Northern Illinois program, and has already started to supersede all of the Harness superlatives. Absolutely. 
He's averaging 6.9 per play. On the Western oh. Michigan return, uh, Darren Duncan just got walloped as Northern Illinois' Courtney Steffen on the special teams work. Doug, let's uh, expand our high speed candidacy around all of the FBS. Well, it, it just kind of concentrate on total yards per game as you go across the board here. Remember, Jordan Lynch averages 300 and really 45 yards per game. So, I, you know, he matches up pretty well. Now, of course, uh, the great linebacker at Notre Dame, a totally different set of stats there, and he's a great player as well. Well, you saw Colin Klein there, of course, who's doing a fabulous job for Bill Snyder at Kansas State. Braxton Millen, also at, uh, at Ohio State. As Van Tuberken will connect on uh, that uh, throw to the edge to Antoine Scriven. Scriven, uh, the speedster, but we've got a late flag on the play. That may be a hold on Gabe Hughes, number 12. Let's see. Legal block in the back. Offense number 12. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Remains first down. You were on it, partner. Yep. Well, it, yeah, that's that's close. He's got to get the He's helmet get to the front in, side. Into the front side. That's right. right? He's got to get he it did. to the front yeah. side. And he didn't do it. Cross uh, the bow, get in front of the defense. That's right. That's a good call. But so, boy, the field position here in the third quarter has killed Western Michigan. Northern's had three possessions inside the 30-yard line. Well, referee Tony Canella and the crew getting this sorted out. Now they're going to start that clock as we're inside four and a half left here in the third. 17 unanswered Northern Illinois points. Now coming underneath is uh, Tyler Van Tubergen as he hits Daniel Braverman, the uh, true freshman. Short pickup. That's a smart play, though. Just don't try to get it back all at one time. And off second in about six. Doug, for the first time all day, this is now a two possession game. Yep. Either way. Yep. Stay right there. Same throw on that quick hitch. As pitch and catch from Van Tubergen again with Daniel Braverman back to back connections there. Yeah, this is still going to be short, uh, going to be third, and looks like about two. Boy, in the receiver position for Western Michigan all year has just <laughs> has been a disaster area with so many injuries. Now they lost Jamie Wilson, uh, the leading receiver on this football team. With 59 grabs and six touchdowns. He's hurt and lost. Timmy Keith. Play action on third and two. And Tubergen surveying things. Progar in pursuit. And Tubergen turned the corner, and he's got a Western Michigan first down. Tyler Van Tubergen was able to beat Sean Progar and Victor Jock to the sticks for the first down pickup. He can run. He runs a 4-6. Now, just look. At it. What I love here is the decision-making. This comes with experience. The one thing that Tyler's lacking. That was a great decision right there. So we get late now here in quarter number three inside the three-minute mark. Western Michigan on the move, down by 10. Back to the ground game. Darian Chance. Oh, he tried to make one cutback but was uh, not able to come free. He was looking to shake the tackle of Tyrone Clark and wasn't able to do it. Yeah, it looked like he tried to cut off his inside foot there on the move to his right and uh, just lost his foot. Coach Graber, I like Darian Chance. Oh, man. What a I'll diminutive but very powerful little back. He has been really impressive today. First time we've really seen him uh, get this many reps. And Tuber going to come back underneath. He's got Daniel Braverman again. Boy. Well, that was a late developing bubble screen. It looked like it had misdirection attached. Yeah, to it. It, you know what it was? It was a double screen. It was a double a screen to the right, screen to the left. Take a look at it. He looks to the right, comes back to the left, and looking at pursuit by the Northern Illinois defense. That was uh, the ball, Jefferson. 
the defensive tackle that made the play. And those are the guys that have to make the plays on those kind of screens. I started this in the first half. Do you believe this is the 18th look at a third down pickup here? Unbelievable. 11 for 17, the 18th time they've been faced with a third down. And Tuber gets thrown, is broken up beautifully, intended for Josh Schaefer. Outstanding breakup off of that uh, corner by uh, Dominique Ware again. Yeah, and uh, just take a look at the coverage here. Here's the out cut. That's a great job of where getting that right hand across and protecting with the left hand. You as a secondary coach uh, in your career, you, uh, you'd probably put that uh, up on the tape and say that's form defending there. That's, isn't it? that's classic. That's yeah. classic. Protect with the left hand, reach with the right hand. Dominic Ware, outstanding job there. Jake Schroeder's got to boot it away. He's going to kick it to Tommy Lee Lewis again. And this time, Western Michigan's kick cover team has got Lewis on the ground. That was uh, Garrett Smith, the uh, the sophomore cornerback who made the hit. Nice job by Garrett Smith on the kick cover team. All right, let's take a look at our AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. Who do we have this week for you? Taj Boyd, that quarterback uh, from the Clemson program. They rolled Wake Forest on Thursday night. All Taj Boyd did was fire five TDs and throw for over 400 yards. You could text your vote to 34763 from your mobile phone. Jordan Lynch is going deep. He's got Martell Moore on that first down low distance delivery. Jordan Lynch and this Northern Illinois offense right now, they've got everything at their disposal role. Yeah, and for those of you who think that Jordan Lynch is a runner, he's a thrower as well. That is a great throw on the post cut, and Martell Moore is the right guy to get it to. 62-yard hookup. Now, that carry from the, uh, the freshman tailback, uh, Keith Harris. And Harris tried to spin his way. Maybe got, maybe got one. Let's call it second and nine. But red zone time again for Jordan Lynch after that 60 through two yard pitch and catch with Martell Moore. Boy, they just keep coming at you. You know, we've been tracking it all day. Their, their, their average today is 18.6 seconds on the play clock every time they snap it. That's how fast they go. Lynch will gun the quick out to Ron Brown. Climb the mat ladder to make the grab. Brown was uh, trying to pull away from Ron Tavius Atkins who made the Western Michigan hit. That, again, the that throw was just a little bit high. But, you know, we have really started, with it, I hope, today at least getting or helping Jordan Lynch get in the discussion for the Heisman. He should be, clearly. We're, we're helping him? Well, we're trying. <laughs> <laughs> His exploits yeah. on the football yeah, field. Yeah, yeah, they, they speak for themselves. Are phenomenal. I they, mean, off the charts good. Yep. Going to let this third quarter uh, come to a close. 45 minutes of football in the books. Western Michigan's got to have the same kind of fourth quarter that Northern Illinois had a third quarter. Northern Illinois with a 14-0 third quarter blitz. 17 unanswered going back to the first half. Can Western Michigan come back from 10 down? Jordan Lynch, Northern Illinois on the move again. The Huskies lead it by 10. The Capital One can't any better than this. As we get set to start quarter number four, we've got to take a look at our Cleveland Clinic Sports Health Game Summary. There it is, and you see the 14 to zip blitzing that uh, Northern Illinois put on. Jordan Lynch, we just showed you why we believe his Heisman candidacy for a football team that has won 16 of their last 17 football games is legitimate. I'm Michael Regga, I'm my partner Doug Graber. Going back to Matthew Sims in the first half with that school record 54 yard field goal. This is a 17 zip Northern Illinois blitz. They've gone from seven down to 10 up and and Doug complicating things for Western Michigan. Nobody's better than Jordan Lynch in Northern Illinois in fourth quarter. No, they're, they're plus 54 in the fourth quarter. They just wear you out. 
Jordan Lynch on that uh, quarterback keep is will angle his way for three down to the five yard line. Well, why has Dave Doran's program just absolutely become so formidable here in his two years on the job? Well, the cup I won obviously a lot of really good players but two they've done a spectacular job coaching this team. This frantic pace on the offense just wears people out in the second half and it has already the day now too. Uh, this is first a goal from the five. Lynch is looking end zone. Lynch being chased. It'll throw the football away. Hey, that's an outstanding job by Freddie Bishop. Yep. Did you see Bishop get Lynch out of the pocket? Big number 97 in Brown for Western Michigan. Yeah, great effort. Chased him all the way. And, uh, and again, a good throw away by Lynch. Smart play. Uh, very well covered downfield by the uh, Broncos. Good throw away. Northern Illinois, 17 unanswered on the board. They're trying to add to their 10-point lead here. A couple of plays in the fourth quarter. Lynch, quarterback draw. He just so tough to get him on the ground, but look at all the brown shirts there. Uh, Western Michigan, nice job by the defense. Garrett Smith, who we've called a couple of times. He's a young backup cornerback, was in on the hit, as was Desmond Bozeman. Yep. But it just totally blocked up on the park. You know what? Jordan Lynch is so strong. I mean, he, he's a huge weight room guy, kinesiology major, wants to be a strength coach. Wow. I mean, he, he you know, he's 220 pounds, but man, it is, uh, he is really put together. Third down and three, double tights now. Jason Shepler. Lynch is going to roll right. Look, end zone. Tommy Lee Lewis has got it. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. 23 unanswered points as Lynch has fired to the end zone, and Tommy Lee Lewis has got his second TD grab of the day. Double pick route. They, they picked to the, uh, the linebacker, had, had no chance to get to him with the pick routes. Now, Good. when you're saying pick route, <laughs> are, well, no, coach, yeah. are you suggesting? that it's an illegal pick and should be flagged. Well, I'm not only really suggesting uh, that they call them bump routes or, or you know, they, the offensive coaches, defensive coaches call them pick routes. All right. <laughs> Matthew Sims. Doug Graber, give us the idea of this, this bump or rub here. Well, th there's just, there's no room for the uh, defensive player to get through it. All right. We'll tell you more when we get back. Whether it's Kevin Smart Fit 401, 4010. From 21 to 14, now to 38 21, Northern Illinois on top, 24 and answer. Let's go back and have Doug Graber uh, describe how a bumper rub route works. Well, it, again, it, number three, Johnny Simon has the coverage, but there's so much traffic he can't get through. He's got no chance to, to get to it to cover it. Offensive coach, uh, the offensive coaches call that a masterfully designed play. Defensive coaches call it a pick. I mean, it's, it'll never change. Three touchdown passes today. He's run for two more. And that's Jordan Lynch. And, and this has just become commonplace, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, Tommy Lee Lewis has had a phenomenal day. The young man that wears number 10 as he chats with Martell Moore, his uh, fellow wideout in Northern Illinois. Trying to win their 13th in a row uh, in Mac play, win their 17th in their last 18, and at least stay tied with Toledo pending the Rockets' outcome at, at Buffalo that starts at 3.30 this afternoon. All right, football fans, catch another one of the premier bowl games this football season, the BBVA Compass Bowl is going to take place in Birmingham, Alabama on January the 5th. For more information, visit bbvacompassbowl.com and do that today. And you'll see it, of course, on the ESPN family of networks, just as you are today. Uh, SEC against the Big East, which, you know, as we have so many bowl opportunities now yep. for uh, all in the FBS. The Mid-American Conference participated in five bowl games last year and won four. Tyler Van Tubergen's got screen left set up and did it beautifully with Brian Fields. Fields 
Rambles his way for 19 yards on that screen left from Tyler Van Tubergen. First down, Western Michigan. Well, the key thing now is for the Western offense at least to get a couple first downs and give their defense a chance to get their win because right now, you know, the, the pace of that Northern Illinois offense just, just wears you out. It's a three possession football game right now. This has been uh, quite a combination today as Van Tubergen will hook up again with Eric Monette. Monette has had a strong afternoon. Touchdown catches twice. Play in the role of Jordan White here yep. in this Bronco yep. program. White, the highly decorated leading receiver in the nation a year ago with his 140 receptions from Alex Carter. Back to the ground game. Darian Chance tried to spin out of a tackle. And if he was able to spin out of that, he had big, big yardage. But the Chance with the, uh, the strong pickup on first down is and Dominique Weir got him on the ground. Yeah, Dominique Weir made a nice open field tackle because uh, if he misses that, they, uh, that's gone. Western Michigan just uh, crucial that they get points on this drive. Man, Tubergen will check down. Darian Chance, oh, did he get wallop. You heard the hit. You heard it all the way up here from uh, Johnny Fauston, who put the shot on Darian Chance. Boy, just uh, just take a look at this collision now, right here on the sideline. Man. Mm, 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 mm. Hard hit Johnny Fauston on the collision. Second and eight. Van Tubergen. And unload the wheel route. He's got Monet. Touchdown if it stands. Now we have late flags, and it's going to be called back on an offensive pass interference on Eric Monet. Result of the play was a touchdown. Pass interference, number 82, offense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Replay second down. Well, did they get Josh Schaefer on the push off? It was in the neighborhood of where Monette came clean to catch the touchdown pass, but Doug evidently it was off the ball and the push off offensively was on Josh Schaefer. Yeah, or or I think what possibly could have happened is he, he may have uh hit the defender and it was caught because he was wide open. You were just talking about potential picks on the <laughs> goal line. Yeah. Van Tubergen coming back to work and uh, that throw was going to fall incomplete. He was looking for Monette. Pressure from Northern Illinois' Alan Baxter. Let's take a look at it now. We have we have it. Let's see if exactly what happened. There's the collision. Uh, you know. I, you don't like it, do you? No, I, I yeah. thought it was inadvertent. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, I mean, yeah, that, that was it. He, he got picked. The defender got picked. Well, it took a touchdown off the board and uh, has Western Michigan way behind the chains now. This is third and 23. Line to make is down at the 33-yard line of Northern Illinois. Van Tubergen under pressure. Got to check down to Darian Chance. Chance got stuck and uh, pushed out of bounds. Chance the ball making the initial hit for Northern Illinois. Was quarterback Sean Evans. I can't emphasize enough how the depth of Northern Illinois is such a factor in this game. They keep rotating that front. Uh, they're fresh all the time, uh, you know, and, and it's very fatiguing rushing the passer. And uh, boy, they just keep bringing them in, and then they're fresh and they get after it. All right, you might be thinking if you're a Western Michigan fan, well, what about four down territory? It's a three possession game, but no. you know, fourth and 18. Mm -hmm. Just behind the sticks too far. Jay Schroeder to hit it away. And uh, make that fair catch is Giorgio Bowers for Northern Illinois. All right, when we come back, we'll tell you more about the exploits of this Northern Illinois football program as they seek their 13th Mac win in a row. Nobody does what Papa John's does. Get a large double bacon six cheese pizza. 
Today's Mid-American Conference game, Northern Illinois, Western Michigan, brought to you by Tim Hortons, official corporate sponsor of the Mid-American Conference. Also by First Energy, our energy is working for you. By GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network, AT&T Rethink Possible. And by Vizio, welcome to the PC Reimagined. Well, the Bronco, uh, the uh, the proud symbol of uh, Western Michigan athletics here in the campus at Kalamazoo. Well, isn't this uh, this autumn? <laughs> Look at that uh, young lady. He's hoping her Broncos could come back, but Dave Dorn and his Northern Illinois Huskies, they have ripped off 24 unanswered points. And he takes over from Jerry Kill, Doug Graber, to start the 2011 season. Dave Dorn is 18-4 and four as the head football coach of this team. Amazing. Jordan Lynch wants to put it up on first down, but now he's going to see Green in front of him, and he'll get 11 yards and step out of bounds at the 31-yard line for a first down. Well, you know, the Coach Storm, they look at the numbers here. 10-0 at Husky Stadium. You know, th this team is now fast approaching winning their 13th straight Mid-American Conference game, and that's tough to do in this league. Amazing. Winning streaks of nine. They won nine in a row to finish off last year. Remember they started two and two? Yep. And then ripped off nine consecutive. One more stride from Keith Harris Jr. and he would uh, be uh, nearing the end zone right about now, but he got taken down. Boy, they just keep coming at you. They keep coming at you and they do it so fast that uh, they just wear you out. Absolutely wear you out. They're not gonna slow down. No, I, they're, they're not, not gonna move. Here they come again. 17 point lead on that first down play. Off play action, Lynch was looking to put it up deep. Now he'll waggle left and come underneath. Oh, what a shot. That uh, was put on Angelo Sebastiano by one of the best in the, the Mid-American Conference this year in the corner, Donald Selescar. Yeah, uh, again, that's a big time hit. I, I would like to see him wrap him up and get him down, but uh, you know, that's uh, uh, unfortunately the, a lot of times in football today, that's including the NFL. We haven't called Lewis Toller's name a lot. One of the, uh, the fine corners in the conference uh, for Western Michigan as Lynch goes back to the ground game with Keith Harris and nothing there yeah. on that first down carry. Desmond Bozeman number 51 was all over that they tried to run a quick trap on him and he came right under it and made the play that Desmond young man out of Fort Lauderdale 14 players in this defensive two deep are from the state of Florida How about that boy Bill Cuba just loves going to the Sunshine State and getting a lot of that state's bountiful talent back here to the west side of the state of Michigan and Western Michigan's campus Lynch at second and nine gonna air it out deep and that is caught outstanding catch by Jawan Breskison. We saw Breskison make these type of grabs on wheel routes last week against Akron. Well, it's a great throw, and Gonzalez car is in good shape, but he doesn't get ripped, and he just misses. He loses the ball. He loses the ball, and of course, that's where the size is a big factor for the wide receiver right there. That's 37 yards. Breskison is a big play wide receiver. They look to him on the deep wheel routes and the deep seams. And that's the guy to throw it to him, I'll tell you. Jordan Lynch, that was a great throw. Well, Harris had the end zone in his sights, but he got dragged down for the backside. And was able to make uh, the hit for Western Michigan on the backside of that was the linebacker, uh, Chris Prom. Right. Prom made the stop. But here they are, banging on the door again. Do you think that Western Michigan's defense flat out is just uh, ran out of gas I, here I, in the second half? Absolutely. I, there's no uh, no question, no, no doubt in my mind. And they knew it was a problem, and they tried, but uh, it, again, they just and again that was Desmond Bozeman again on the hit. But you know what? It, it just it's so tough. Western has some depth up front with the three down linemen. They played six today. There, they alternated. But in their secondary and the linebacker spots, uh, they just don't have the depth. Well, another long drive, extended drive for Jordan Lynch in Northern Illinois. Keith Harris uh, just got taken down by Bozeman. 
So it's going to bring up a third and three. The line to make it the five. Lynch. Look at it. So he's got it. Deron Brown. Second touchdown catch of the day. Fourth touchdown throw from Jordan Lynch. He's run for two more. And Northern Illinois has blown it open here in the second half. Absolute machine on offense. I mean, look at that. That you talked about open. Wow. Deron Brown, and of course, the Lynch doesn't miss many uh, shots like that. Folks, this was a 21 to 14 Western Michigan lead late second quarter. It is now 45 to 21 Northern Illinois. 31 unanswered points. Deron Brown, second TD catch of the afternoon. I'm a streaker. I'm 300 pounds. Four touchdowns unanswered here in the uh, the second half. 28 unanswered points in the second half. If you go back to the Matthew Sims field 54-yarder <laughs> to end the uh, the first half, and, and and Doug, this is what you brought up. Uh, they've taken the lead anyway in the third quarter, and then they'd like to put you in the vice and strangle you as the point margin shows for Dave Doran in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and, and you know, defensively, there, there's not many teams that have the depth required to play against that offense. I mean, it, it, they're out on their feet right now defensively. Absolutely out on their feet, and here they keep coming. Look at the numbers there. Wow. And the Western Michigan's done a nice job. They put up 351 yards of total low, but most of that was in the first half. Yep. Wow. Most, and most in the first quarter. Well, yeah, no, exactly right. All right, Brian Fields along uh, with Darren Duncan back in the deep spots. Fields about six yards deep, not going to come out. The success of uh, this Northern Illinois football program, I know it's not lost on all of you Husky fans. And, all of you around the Chicagoland area and the third largest market in the country, we uh, say hi to all of you watching on WPWR My 50 and uh, in Rockford. Downstate in Illinois, all of you checking out your Northern Illinois Huskies. Uh, we salute all of you in WTVO ABC 17. So two of our outstanding stations uh, along our Mid-American Conference uh, football syndicated network Watching this Northern Illinois Blitzkrieg here in the second half. Tyler Van Tubergen going back to work. Seam route for Mona. Who made the terrific grab? That's a big play again. Eric Monette's had a day with Tyler Van Tubergen. Yeah, that was uh, Johnny Faustin on the coverage in that play. It was a great throw. The play action helped. The play action really helped in terms of the protection and a terrific throw. That's 38 the yards, Doug, on yep. that hook up there. <laughs> 38 yard connection. <laughs> and Tubergen going back up top. Get in the seam. That's broken up. Well, late flag. Late flag as uh, Josh Schaefer was looking to make that reception. And back up corner, Sean Evans is going to get hit. Yeah, it, it wasn't blatant, but there was definite contact before the ball uh, got there. No question. Pass interference. Defense. 15 yard penalty first down. Yep that was definitely on the on Sean Evans young man out of Fort Walton Beach Florida take a look at it. Yeah well he's got his hand wrapped right around his head his right hand no question. Western Michigan uh, quickly uh, they march right at that red zone just outside of it a little bit and of course uh, well they want to want to get off to Schneid here in the second half of the 28 unanswered. This is Darian Chance on the carry Chance. Got a couple. Hey, all of you here in the state of Michigan as well. We want to salute to you as we are uh, coming out of Waldo Stadium. All of you checking out your Western Michigan Broncos on WZZM here in Kalamazoo and Battle Creek. In the middle part of the state, Lower Peninsula, WHTV and Lansing, of course, the uh, uh, the big ABC out of uh, the city of Detroit, WXYZ TV in Motown. Good to have all of you with us. 
here on the Waldo Stadium. Van Tuberken will dump it off to Antoine Scriven. And Scriven will work outside the numbers. He's got a first down inside the 10. Uh, Northern Illinois is clearly the dominant team in the Mid American Conference in their defensive red zone. They're number one in the conference. They've only had 10 touchdowns scored. Western in the first half was two for two in the red zone against Northern. They, those folks do not like that. This is a big pride factor with that defense. Matt Tuber got back to work to the corner of the end zone. Schaefer had his hands on it and wasn't able to haul it in with Evans in coverage. But just off the fingertips. Pretty good throw. Ooh, wow, that was close. I'll bring up uh, second and ten. Hey, and I don't want to forget all of our friends too in Grand Rapids here in Michigan on the west side of the state. WZZM television, as I was mentioning a moment ago. Good to have all of you with us. This is Tyler Van Tuberken. He's in the end zone. Touchdown from 10 yards out. The legs of Tyler Van Tuberken getting it done there for the Western Michigan TD. Well, the boot here and a great block by the wideout, and it really caught Northern napping on that play. And they are now three for three. Look at the block right here. That's Collins. Nice job. And here's the boot right there. Beautiful. Wide open. Five plays, 75 yards, nine-yard touchdown on Tyler Van Tubergen. Everybody in, uh, in the brown and gold happy about that here in Kalamazoo. And now Bill Cubitt down by 18 is going to go for two to try to get it back to a two-possession game. Certainly uh, the, the way to go for uh, Ryan oh, for Bill Cubitt here. Yeah, absolutely. Now, again, this is what happens when you've had such a revolving door at wide receiver. That's a substitution issue. And uh, again, they've had so many injuries to that position. Had a rookie crop of wide receivers to begin with. Lost the great Jordan White last year. Uh, Robert Arnheim, who's now a graduate assistant here. Boy, they had some good ones. Yeah, Bill Cuban, you know, we, uh, we spoke to Tim Hiller, the highly decorated quarterback. But how about the wide receivers here? Greg Jennings. How good? And, and Hiller threw to Jennings. When he, Hiller was a senior, in, or rather a freshman, and Jennings was a, uh, a senior in 2005. Boy, he was a great one here, wasn't he? Wow. That's against Northern Illinois yep, right here. It huh? sure is. Yeah. Well, he's had uh, amongst the uh, greatest hands, I think, in college. Uh, uh, he, he was amazing to watch. It still is. Uh, he, uh, Green Bay Packers. Yep. Uh, Tony Scheffler, the terrific tight end now with the Detroit Lions. Now the option pitch and throwing the football was Darian Chance. And Eric Monette had his hands on it, but not able to haul it in. Wide open, and all he had to do was flip it up in the air and just uh, put a little bit too much juice on it, and away it goes. Mm. With still 6:26 left, had Monette been able to haul that in, it would have brought it back to a 16-point yep. or two possession. Absolutely, Northern Illinois lead. The key issue with that drive, though, was the Western Michigan defense finally finally got to get their wind a little bit. You know, in, in the last series, Northern, they actually slowed down a little bit, Mike. They, yep. There was only 14 seconds left on the play clock when they were snapping. That yeah, was right. their average. Yep. Yep. They went from 19 to 14. So they did slow down a little bit with the big lead. We'll see what they do this series. Well, you know, I go back to you as we look at Tommy Lee Lewis, but think about the receivers here at Western Michigan over the course of oh, the last couple. Wow. You know, uh, Juan Nunez, Robert Arnheim, right? We mentioned to Jamarco Simmons. We That's... mentioned Greg Jennings and Tony Scheffler. That onside kick opportunity is gobbled up by Northern Illinois. Well, we got a flag from the uh, the uh, the side judges. Uh, I think we'll, Western. We'll wait to see. Western was offsides, I believe. Yeah. Recovering the onside was Angelo Sebastiano. And uh, Doug Graber and I both believe it's going to be a Western Michigan offside. 
Offsides, 34 the kicking team. Five yard penalty will be assessed at the end of the kick. You know, Northern Illinois is just a well coached football team. Even that onsides the team, I mean, they were obviously have been well schooled. Uh, nice decision by Sebastiano. Uh, they're just a, a really, really good football team. Man, I can't wait to November 14th, I'll tell you that. Now, Northern Illinois uh, next Saturday will be back at home at Husky Stadium against UMass. As that first down carry uh, is with Keith Harris Jr. who got stacked up. Freddie Bishop again in on the hit. I love the way Freddie Bishop plays defensive end for Western Michigan. Boy, this is his 35th start for the Broncos. Yeah. And Freddie, and he's played hard today. Hard. Tough football player. Tough-minded leader on this ball club. Clock running now as we come inside six minutes left. 45-27. 28 points in the second half on the four touchdowns from Jordan Lynch, who now is letting that play clock yep, run down. He let it run down to three, two. Akeem Daniels gets the call. Daniels, the uh, diminutive 5'7", 180 pounder out of Kissimmee, Florida. Daniels uh, got about five. It's going to bring up third and a long three. See, I, I really like this now. Slow the game down. Uh, you know, why take a chance on injuries and everything else? Uh, you know, why you know, turnovers? Uh, nothing but bad things can happen for Northern Illinois at this particular juncture. And when you're up by 18, sure. you want I mean, to shorten absolutely. the game. The less snaps, the better. They don't want to slow it down, though. I mean, they, they're well, doing it's this. not their nature. No, they're doing this grudgingly. Now Lynch will trigger the out, and he threw it over the head of Deron Brown. It could play. He's going to bring up a fourth down now. And is this uh, going to be punt time or Matthew Sims time? It'll be a 50-yarder. He's yep. kicked a 54-yarder. He's on the field. Actually, let's let's call it. They're going to the holder Ryan Near is going to kneel at the 39-yard line. Yep. A 49-yarder. He's hit from uh, 54 to end the first half, a school record best. A lot of leg for Matthew Sims again, and this time he's hit another one. He hit it inside that, uh, that left upright from 49 yards away. Matthew Sims from 54 to end the first half, and now... 49 more on this three-point make. Well, you know, the, the beat goes on for Northern Illinois. This is how they've won now 13 Mid-American Conference games in a row. They wear you down. They just keep coming at you. They have superior depth on both sides of the football uh, and a great quarterback and a, a good kicking game, solid in every single aspect. And uh, let's face it, they are the dominant team right now in the Mid-American Conference. The 54-yarder, as I mentioned, set a school mark to end the first half. And you look back at it. At the time, it's a 21-14 football that game. That right there, and it is no coincidence that after that Matthew Sims school record make from 54, that Northern Illinois came out on fire in this second half. No question. Changed the momentum going into halftime. No question. Back to a 21-point lead for Northern Illinois. Ryan Fields from inside the five on the Western Michigan return. Western Michigan will start this drive from their own 22 yard line 20 yard return for Brian Fields. How about our play of the game brought to you by kicking quick and loans engineered to a mayor's Jamal Bass on the INT early third quarter for Northern Illinois. And that was Marlon Moore on the coverage that tight coverage on the slant that set it up. The Huskies of Northern Illinois, they are minutes away from going to eight and one overall with their 13th straight Mac win in hand. Their 17th win in their last 18 is Van Tubergen is uh, on the money as he drills uh, Eric Monette again. What a big day for Van Tubergen and Monette in uh, tandem for Western Michigan. 
That was the patented post outcut. It is run right at 23 yards, and that is a staple of Billy Cubitt's offense wherever he's been. 25 yards on that hookup. Van Tubergen again on that stop comeback route, and this time he missed Eric Monet incomplete. Now, Michael, my question to you is, will Northern Illinois crack the top 25 this week? They're getting votes. They are. Ohio's Bobcats, as we know, and rightfully so. Yep. Terrific job by Frank Solich. They'll start in about 15 minutes at Jaeger Stadium in Oxford against their rival, Miami, as Darian Chance has got a couple on that carry. And the next question is, if Kent State could somehow beat Rutgers well, today, it, my old that's team, that's right. Will they be in the top 25? There's uh, Eric Monette. But big day for him. Yeah, first over the 100-yard mark and the two first-half touchdowns. Big day for Monette, fifth-year senior. He's now the, uh, as we said, he's uh, taken over the role that Jordan White has played in this pass game for Western Michigan the last couple of years. And Tubergen will deliver another strike. This one to Justin Collins, his first catch of the afternoon. First down, Western Michigan, as we're inside the four-minute mark. Boy, and Van Tubergen, man, did he, did he take a shot from Alan Baxter on that last throw? Whoa. Well, the numbers keep piling up for Tyler Van Tubergen. He threw for 333 yards last week in that loss at Kent State. Came underneath. Got another completion. Eric Monette again keeps racking up the receptions. You take a look at just the uh, running underneath, clear, a uh, clear and run under. Doug, that's the route that Jordan White was so brilliant. Oh, he, he turned those uh, seven to ten yard underneath routes into 45 to 60 yard touchdowns during his career is Van Tubergen on the move. He's got a first down in the red zone, stepping out of bounds at the 17 yard line. You know, uh, another thing that really hurt Van Tubergen was he missed spring football. Yeah, you got a senior quarterback in Carter. The backup is going to get a lot of reps in the spring. He had a knee injury, missed the spring. But I'll tell you, this young guy has got a lot of talent. West Ottawa High School here on the west side of the Wolverine State, Holland, Michigan. Uh, gunning that, uh, again, that quick slant or that in route. And, well, Doug, they've thrown it so many times today. Yeah. Now, you know, is that North Marlon Moore and that Northern Illinois, they're, they're starting to sit on no, that. They're, they're big time. It's time for the slant and go. Sluggo. <laughs> slant and go, that's right. The Sluggo. Sluggo. There you go. There's Alex Carter, of course, the highly decorated senior quarterback here that during the Toledo game, game four of the year that uh, Western Michigan lost here at home. He got injured with the, the very severe tendon tear on his uh, middle finger of his throwing hand. Yep. And he has not been able to play since, may not play the rest of the year. Van Tubergen to the corner. Collins, he's got it. Touchdown, Western Michigan. How about the throw on the move? From Tyler Van Tubergen to Justin Collins, 17 yard touchdown for the Broncos. Boy, watch Van Tubergen going to his left. Watch him get those shoulders turned and make a perfect throw. Perfect. Collins ran a good route, corner route, and the ball is delivered on time. Doug, there are NFL quarterbacks who cannot make that throw rolling to their left right. across the body to the left pylon in the corner. Hey, he's got a lot of talent. Adding the PAT is Andrew Haldeman. Eight play, 78 yard drive, 17 yard touchdown throw. Uh, folks, don't look now, we've got 82 total points on the board today. <laughs> wow. As Tyler Van Tubergen has thrown his fourth touchdown pass. Now, Doug, last year, he uh, threw six TDs against the Akron Zips in one of the final games as he you know, uh, took over that day yep. for Alex Carter. What a day for Tyler Van Tubergen, but it, you know, it, it's a it's a 14 point game and, and you know a shot. Yeah, there's a shot. The door's still open a little bit, but uh, unfortunately it looks like his big day is probably going to come in a Western Michigan loss. Yeah, and, and the thing that's uh, 
that really gives it a lot of credence is Northern is really a good defensive team. I mean, they have good cover guys. They have a great front four and with depth. Well, Andrew Haldeman, he's going to try another onside kick here. 237 left. <laughs> Same guy. Same guy. Yep. Angelo Sebastiano coming up to on the hands team coming up to uh, haul in the onside attempt. All right, let's take a look at our player of the game brought to you by First Energy. Our energy is working for you. Now, Jordan Lynch could be awarded this honor each and every football game, but how about the day Tommy Lee Lewis has had? He's caught two touchdowns. He's had four punt returns for 75 yards. He's had a kickoff return for 44 yards as well. Yeah, 123 all purpose. A pretty good day for young Mr. Tommy Lee. It's brought to you by First Energy, and again, their energy is working for you. All right, 236 left. Michael Regai, Doug Graber, as we finish it off here in Kalamazoo, and as that snap uh, was handled by Jordan Lynch, we've got flags and whistles. Now, I'm a little surprised that Jordan Ball starts, Lynch. 75 offense, five yard penalty. I'm a little surprised that Jordan Lynch is, uh, is still in the game. I mean, that's 75% of your offense uh, right there is number number six. Just, just racking up uh, the all purpose yardage offensively. And again, this young man leads the nation. In total offensive yardage, all of the FBS. It's Keith Harris on the carry, and Harris will get stunned back. All right, we're going to give Northern Illinois this this win here in Kalamazoo today. Now they've won 13 in a row. They now, with the win, will go to 5 and 0 and 8 and 1 overall. They'll have won 17 of the last 18. Well, Western Michigan falling now to uh, to one and four and three and six. They'll have to win their final three, Doug, to be bowl eligible. And now Toledo's Rockets got to beat Buffalo today yep. uh, in uh, UB Stadium in Western New York to be able to keep pace with Northern Illinois at five and zero. Oh. But boy, I tell you, Northern Illinois and Toledo are on a collision yeah, course. Yeah, man, I no can't wait. November fourteenth. Let, let's go to DeKalb that night. Oh, you want to go? Let's that, go. We hey, need to watch that. One. That will place will be rocking. Mm. Yes, it will. Now, again, Dave Doran has UMass, Charlie Molner's program at home at Husky Stadium next week. And yep. again, they're winless. Where they've won 19 in a way. row. Well, 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 so, <laughs> you know, you got to play the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to play the game. Uh, you would think that that would keep Northern Illinois in very good stead and undefeated in the MAC. But you got to play the game. Harris but, on another carry. Yeah, this is smart because they're not going to let Jordan Lynch carry the ball. He's just in a pure handoff mode, run the clock. Doug, with that in mind, timeout Western Michigan. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we've we've thrown out the names in our Heisman watches this year. Denard Robinson, right here in the state of Michigan with the Michigan Wolverines, brilliant runner. Braxton Miller with the Ohio State Buckeyes, brilliant runner. But Doug, here's my thing to you as a head coach. When you have a quarterback that carries the football 20 to 30 times a game and absorbs the hits and punishment that quarterbacks do in this game, yep. I wonder sometimes if, if ultimately it's a good thing and it's maybe too much for your quarterback to take those kind of hits. Well, the only thing that makes, uh, makes it the same is the fact that he is just so strong. And there he's running the football again. And I mean, absorbing, yeah. absorbing contact and hits from four Western Michigan Broncos. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's down to inside. How many carries for Lynch today? Yeah. How many carries, guys? Look at him right on it. Well, there's 137 yards, seven straight, over 100. Show me the 21 carries. Uh, Doug, I, you know, again, call me a skeptic, call me a cynic. Right. Don't get me wrong. I love the skills of Jordan Lynch, Denard Robinson, Braxton Miller. I, as a head coach, though, man, I, I got to tell you, I don't know if I could have him running that much. That's 75 percent of your offense right there. And, I understand. Uh, but, you know, but yeah, that's me. I, and that's probably why I'm up here calling games right. instead of a head coach. But, uh, <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, though, at this juncture of the game, I don't think he should be in there myself. Well, here's Jordan Lynch, and uh, again, you know. 
I mean, he, he, he doesn't tiptoe now. He, he gets in traffic and he goes. And he's got speed and power, and he can put boots on people. He's just an amazing, amazing athlete, and he's so strong. Look at that. He's just running by. No slide. He, he, he never slides. Never. And I'm told last week they were upset with him when he ran over the corner uh, because they want him to slide and not take so many shots. But uh, that's his personality. And he's a gunslinger. He's a linebacker playing quarterback. That's what he is. Yeah, no question about that. Dave Doran told us that uh, last week when yep. we uh, we had our conference call with him in preparation for their win over what would be their win over Akron. And uh, you know it's uh, as he said Chandler Harnish more cerebral more of a, a guy who uh, really wanted to you know talk the game and Jordan Lynch just wants to do the game. Yep. And Lynch looking to put it up and he's got a seam route. It is caught by his uh, big tight end Jason Shepler and Shepler gets put down at the five yard line. So up 14 with 90 seconds left and looking for the tight end in the scene. <laughs> well they're going to just keep bringing it. I mean that's their personality. That's their uh, that's just the way they go. And uh, a lot of people are heading for the gates on that last play. 29 yards on the pitch and catch from Jordan Lynch to no, the tight I think, end. I think they're going to take a knee and just uh, get the game over with her, I believe. And I, and I like this. Yep. yep, we do. After the Jason Shepler catch, Lynch will take that knee. He's going to have to take uh, two more knees. And this one will be put in the books. Right. Big throng of Northern Illinois Husky fans that made the trip from around uh, the Cal, the Chicagoland area, all over the state. Chicago only a couple hours from yeah. here. Yeah, that's an easy. This is their shortest trip of the year. Listen to them. They are uh, rolling out the NIU chant here inside Waldo Stadium. They got beat here. Remember Garrett Wolf? Yep. We did the game uh, back in 2008. Came in here. They were ranked. Yes, they, they were. They were ranked top 20 in Western Michigan. West. Laid it on them. They got it. They got them. And that is going to do it. Win number 13 in a row in the Mid American Conference. As we see Jordan Lynch shaking hands with his senior counterpart Alex Carter, Dave Dorn, and Bill Cubitt talk about it. All right, we'll come back with a final word. Northern Illinois beats Western Michigan 48 34. Don't go away. 1 800 401 4010. A most impressive performance by the Northern Illinois Huskies. Uh, they go to 8-1 and 5-0 and on the map with their 48-34 win over Western Michigan. Now, join us for more Mid-American Conference football three weeks from today. Kent State, they're playing well. They travel to Bowling Green. Falcons are also playing well. Game time set for noon. Now, for Greg Logan, our producer, David Task, our director, all of our terrific crew, and for Doug Graber, I'm Michael Regai. Wishing you a pleasant good Saturday from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Northern Illinois beats Western Michigan 48-34. So long, everybody.